Hello, loonies and high priests of Khonshu. This is Russell from Tomes of Evil, and I'm wishing Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast, a happy 200 episode milestone. Can't wait to get there myself. Ray, you're the best, buddy. Enjoy it. is episode 200 and things are a little different here it's uh it's it's a strange event we're trying to put in something a bit different as you can hear we have a studio audience it's all good we're we're (laughs) you know we're buzzing um i'm your high president conchu ray and it's very uh, a very special show we've got uh we've got a game show to go through and we have some very valued loonies patronies co-hosts um everyone's come back for this one to play for you the loony so uh this should be fun what also we got we also have uh the prize giveaways for uh, that competition it's probably a while ago now as uh, for the moon knight pins so we'll be drawing that live that will be after the show after the game show and then to cap it all off uh there's a little secret interview chat with a uh, another special guest but welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, before I start, of course, a huge thank you to, of course, the Patronis, uh, those listed as co-producers and executive producers on the show. Um, a big thank you to Daniel, Justin, Derek, Wayne, Jordan, Josh, James, Russell, and Anthony. Thank you so much. There's actually one of them here, one of the uh, one one of the Patronis uh, repping the Patronis. Uh, so that that's really cool as well. Uh, Daniel Doing is the gentleman. And I'd like to shout out Fringe Night as well, an original indie comic based on Erie, Pennsylvania's very own mysterious superhero. So a big thank you to, to Daniel, Daniel for that. Uh, also, slightly different, big thanks to Destructo Disc Designs and Media Patrol. Thanks, guys. Uh, these guys have supplied the, the Moon Knight pins that we'll be announcing uh, the winners for um, later after the game show. Uh, and... Actually, on the, uh, at the top of the show there, you probably heard as well a little mm-hmm. shout-out to a, a, a mate of the show and a fellow collective member, Russell from Tomes of Evil. So a big thanks to Russell for your well wishes for this 200th episode, Russell. And for those that haven't checked it out, check out his uh, his show, Tomes of Evil. It's uh, it's starting with a bang, all to do with supervillains uh, and well worth, well worth a listen. So anyway... Uh, loonies there is an option to watch this podcast in video format or format as they say in france um what who i have with me i've got (laughs) i have eight contestants and uh, what i want to say is that each of these eight contestants they are absolutely treasured and valued for the itk show i mean they've come on uh you know they've done shows themselves they've co-hosted They've contributed greatly. So uh, who better to, to be on the game show than these, these fine people? Um, let's go around. First off, a big, a big welcome to OG. Hi, Professor Conchu. Rebecca, hello. How are you? Hi. I'm good, good. Excellent. Yep. Are, you, are you ready for the game show? You know it, Ray. Ready to show myself up on everyone's <laughs> behalf. Exactly. Well, I mean, the chats that we've had beforehand, you, you, you were telling me how confident you are. You're telling me how you're going to win this. You're going to take this out. Um, yeah. I, I, I can't wait. I so. don't remember any of it. <laughs> Ray, I think you need to have a mental health assessment <laughs> <laughs> because Probably. that wasn't me you were talking to. <laughs> <laughs> May have been in my dreams. I don't know. Yeah. Um, a big welcome to the show. Also as well, OG co-host. He started it all. We kicked it off. 
Connor Shu. Connor Shu, welcome back. Good to have hello, you. Hello, hello. Yes, Connor good to be Shoe. back. Yeah, it's great to have you back. And um, and again, uh, you know, uh, issue not issue episode fifty, episode one hundred. You're back for episode two hundred. Uh, mm-hmm. How are you feeling for the game? Game up. Uh, as uh, many people would know, following this uh, podcast, I'm actually the five times world championship winner of Moon Knight trivia. So Ooh. I'm here for number six. Oh, you've got some some work cut out for you. (laughs) (laughs) I like a bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of pregame banter. Uh, Also, a big, a big welcome back. He's got, look, he's got the best backdrop in this video conference or meeting. What I don't know what you call it, Tommy, but Tommy, the man on the streets. Tommy, welcome. Welcome to the the show. Yeah. Hello. It's good to, to see everybody this time. And uh, really, really happy to be here. It's, I, I missed you all a lot. So, Yeah, we, we've missed you too as well, Tommy. We know that life is very busy uh, and, and, you know, we've all got different schedules, but great to have you. Uh, for those that don't know, Tommy uh, was one of the first guests on, I think, Connor, you and I, we had yeah. on. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, and we, uh, we chatted with Tommy, got to, to know him, know him as a, a very dedicated Moon Knight fan. It became the man on the streets, of course. Uh, next up, we have a, another player, and I say that P L A Y A. This is Phil, the Drop King, Perich. Phil, how are you going? Welcome back. Hey, it's great to be back, Ray. I'm honored to be part of episode 200. You know, as oh. it's better well known, Ray, Rebecca, and a bunch of pasty white guys. <laughs> No, uh, but Phil, Phil has been instrumental as well with supporting the show. And, and Phil, you, you've jumped in as host. You've, you've jumped in a, as like co-host as well. You've done a, a, a couple of things called like Round Table Robin, the sidekicks, Revengeance. I believe that's how Tommy fra- uh, you know, phrased it. Um, so plenty of stuff. Uh, you, fan, uh, you know, listeners would be um, familiar with, with Phil. A big welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, also, we have here a, a, a massive contributor. He actually, you hear him in some capacity every time we start the show. Noel, Noel Looney Tunes. How are you, Noel? Welcome back. I'm good. I'm good to see you. Most of you. Excellent. Yeah, he, he, Noel says that because he, he's good to see most of everyone, but not me. Um, of course, <laughs> in the sense, I just in the cordial sense. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. No, no, good to see you. Yes. Um, good to see you, Noel. Great to have you on board. I know you've been reading up on your your trivia on Moon Knight. Born to lose, uh, baby. Born to lose. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Putting a lot of faith in, uh, giving a lot of faith for those that have written in and registered to be re- <laughs> represented. Um, of course, as well, Josh Geronimo Johnson rounding at the, the bottom left-hand corner of the video. How are you going, Josh? How's it going? What's up, guys? Good, good, Josh as well. Instrumental. Josh Geronimo has been on this, the likes of Isla Ra. Look, a few of you guys have as well. Um, Josh, good to see that there's no Batman figures there behind you. Let's keep that nice and clean. Plenty of posters, though. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't see Batman. I only see Moonlight. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, a big thank you, Josh. Um, and again, yeah, Josh has taken on board episodes by himself, hosting and, and co-hosting as well. Also, I like to call you the custodian of, uh, of the 80s. Josh, he seems to have a lot of knowledge of, of 80s uh, comics. So there you go. Josh has been on for Acts of Vengeance, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so welcome, welcome. And uh, we also have as well, we're nearly, Daniel doing, as I mentioned, Daniel, welcome to the show. Daniel is repping the Petrunis. He's the top tier tr- uh, Petruni at the moment. So a huge thank you, Daniel, for your contribution and your, and your support. Um, but also a fantastic writer, creator of Fringe Night. Welcome to the show. I'm, just, I'm so happy to be here, you know. I'm, I'm so happy I just made it this far, man, you know. You know I'm, just, I'm just so happy. And, and, and this guy's happy too, you know. We're just, we're both excellent. just so happy to, to be included. Excellent. excellent. So, Daniel, for those that can't see the video, Daniel's brought in a... A sock puppet of Moon Knight. No, 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 he's he's cosplay mask of Moon Knight. Um, he's he's probably his other personality. We don't know, but a big welcome to Daniel. And finally, as well, I'm gonna have to put this in post production. Get the reverb. Get the echo. The power of Chad. Chad, Chad, Chad. Chad. How are you going, Chad? Pretty great. 
um, my second drink. So uh. excellent. I, was, I know it's a long intro. Uh, you might be well onto your third by the time we start. Um, but no, no, but, but Chad, fantastic. Six in the um, morning, Chad. <laughs> Bite um, me and all. <laughs> <laughs> Chad is no stranger to the ICK community and the show as well. Frequent, um, frequent host uh, as well as contributor, uh, and and uh, you know all round, I guess uh, online presence. Chad in the in the chat and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so it'd be good to have you here. How, how's your moon night knowledge getting you? Uh, you know, how is it going? <laughs> I guess you could say it's waxing and waning. Hey, awesome. Oh, Lovely. Nice. <laughs> nice. We have to get the moon. I want to Someone's get some. Someone's more... on form. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. I want to um I want to get some puns in there, guys. Wait till you hear what I came up with the name for the show. Anyway, Wait. before we kick off, guys, um, before we get into the game, I just a really quick bit of white noise. Now you all must have heard of it. Uh, the the announcement of the creative team for the new Moon Knight comic book series coming out in july so jed mckay and alessandro cappuccio big apologies i did say cappuccino the other episode but you know that was just my brain i was probably hungry but i just want to open it up what what do you guys think of this creative team how do you see the the, the series going um stuff like that uh tommy i'm really excited i'm not very familiar with mckay or cappuccio but um time with black cat taskmaster right and i I heard those were short but fun so i'm really excited because it's another moon knight book and i know it's probably just tied to the hype of getting the show ready but more moon knight is is good for me so really excited yeah nice one how about uh anyone else anyone else scared of the creative team Phil, no, I'm I'm ha- no, I'm happy. You know, like I said, I've been reading Black Cat. It, it's been great. So, and I've heard nothing but good things about Taskmaster. So, I think it's going to be a really good thing. Plus, like I was saying on my show, why why are we getting this in June? Are we going to get a big announcement soon? I don't know because the, um, show, because the show's not coming out yet. I, I thought, wow, they're dropping the book already, which is great for the fans. But I'm like, yeah, we might finally they're get trying to get on, they're trying to get on top of it, like unlike that. Yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier book that ended up coming out <laughs> way before the show did. So well, that maybe. was supposed to come out end of last year, but right. yeah. I'm assuming maybe they're trying to line it up. They're like, no, we're getting out in front of this. Yeah, yeah, I think my only concern about it is that it's. I think in the blurb it said coming off the the Avengers stuff. Yeah, which yeah. I wasn't like massively. Bond yeah. of so Didn't blurb say back to the streets or something like yeah, yeah yeah which I'm, as well yeah so I, i'm hoping like, i mean but i love mckay i think black cat is one of the best things marvel's putting out at the moment yeah. taskmaster's fantastic the art that i've seen looks great so overall very excited hope there's some variant covers as i said on the uh on the forums because the mcniven one i know a lot of people out there love it it's just not my favorite style of art i agree with you rebecca mm. but i figure that like all the number ones tend to have at least a couple of variants so mm. they may even get um the black knight one recently just had a black variant which is very cool so uh maybe white uh moon knight will get a nice white one i just want to know if connor Ooh, ray, ray and Re- i just want to know if connor ray and rebecca are going to be in it again uh, <laughs> connor died on the way back to his home plan I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get one of the blank covers and draw us in <laughs> yes yes that, that's the only way we'll kind of get in uh, daniel you were about to say something well like kind of jumping on what rebecca was saying there like you know it's like it's following this whole you know the age of Kanchu and avengers thing at the very end of it like they had black panther meeting with moon i'd be like oh well you know you did kick all of our asses so now we want you to join the avengers and Moon Knight's just like, no, you idiots don't know what's coming. So I'm going to do what I do best and go back to the streets and defend it with my two conchu damned hands. Mm. So, like, I I kind of had that inkling way back when I'm like, there's something, something up. Like, I didn't know if maybe they would do yeah. kind of like like a maybe like 10-page story in the back of the Avengers connecting to Moon Knight or if he'd right. get his own series. But, like, I got that inkling from it. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Did anyone notice as well that the – the logo of midnight that they used very similar to the charlie houston yeah and what i'm wondering if there's any that cover that... is big houston vibes it is actually yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely so i like i really like the new uh the new logo yeah mm. 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's got the black for those, you know, it's it's got like a like a black sliver as well that goes that runs across it. Um, so yeah, I mean, very iconic the the Moon Knight titles. Uh, Josh, any any, any um, thoughts on the series? Happy to have more Moon Knight comics coming out. Yeah, yeah, baby. Amen. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you say Chad as well. Any, any, uh, any final thoughts on? You mentioned something about the Midnight Mission. I thought was interesting. Mm. I was just pointing out that you know it's kind of weird that he wants to institute the sanctuary and he's calling it the Midnight Mission. And IRL, there is a Midnight Mission in LA. And it's like a life assistance program. Yeah. Do you guys and, know this, or you, you American no. fellows? No, no, no. Yeah, I like I like the idea that it was Jeff Wilde kind of midnight thing. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I think that it might be named after Jeff, kind mm-hmm. of to maybe he could have done better if he wasn't a vigilante. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. R- RIP. Jeff. I think it's, that's, that bit's going to be interesting. Be a bit like uh, Heroes for Hire, but without the cost. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um, it's certainly a, a different. I don't know. It's interesting. They haven't really given. Well, they're given little bits and pieces. It just. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see how the tone of the of the uh, the series goes. But uh, yeah, there you go, loonies. If you haven't heard about it, it's uh, it is has been confirmed by Marvel. Uh, there are links to the Marvel article and or the the video, um, you know, for, for marketing purposes for this upcoming series. Anyway, uh, how is everyone want to win something? <laughs> <laughs> Nice yeah. here we go. Here we go. All right, let's uh, uh, we're just playing for charity, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, well, let, let's uh, let the games begin. Yes, okay, so Looney's, this is it something a little different for uh, the episode, episode 200. We've got something, it's called The Price is White. Um, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that okay? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Who wants to be a homicidal vigilante? Put that one there. Face or no face? <laughs> face or no face? That's a good one. I was, I, 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 <laughs> if anyone's got any, please throw them out there. Superhero sweep. I don't know. Um, this is a game show, and what we are going to do, listeners, it is four rounds. And as kind of alluded to, the eight contestants here, the eight hosts, they will be playing for um, the loonies that have registered. Um, and apologies, actually, we, we've got more... Loonies that registered in, unfortunately, the um, all the spots were filled. So, you know, maybe we can do something like this um, next time. But thank you so much for your support. Anyway, um, uh, four rounds, guys. Okay, so round one is Know Your Moon Knight, questions based on Moon Knight and the Moon Knight series. Okay. Round two will be Artist's Corner. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw up a comic panel for you guys, uh, as well as a question you've got to recognise where it's from or what it, whatever, whatever the question is. Uh, third round is a bit, okay. So I should have said round one, normal points, round two, double points, round three into the knowledge. Uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's a uh, questions based on the ITK episode. So 199 of them, uh, and uh, they will be regular points, but there are extra points available for, bits of information that you can give me now guys everyone as i said i will be giving you points for for, for good answers uh, if they're not entirely correct uh, so just you know just feel free to to jump in also the final round will be a and this is triple points will be a who am i just one one last question to end it all uh, and then i'll tally up the points in uh, i've even got this little, little spreadsheet here i'll fill out the points and i will find out who has won now you guys, as mentioned, you guys are playing for some loonies. So let's start off. Rebecca, um, who are you playing for at home? I'm so, so sorry in advance <laughs> to Corey Hardiman. Like, Thanks. I really, I, I apologise, but I am standing in for you. I'm here Excellent. for you. Excellent. A, if, if that isn't a vote of confidence or for you, Corey, I don't know what is. Fantastic. Yeah, I hope you're listening. Uh, Konishu, Konishu, who are you playing for? Me and Justin the L, Osgood. Oh. We're going to hoot who? it up or something. I should have thought of an Owl. Sorry. Better. <laughs> Sorry, Connor, who? 
Justin the Owl Osgood. Who? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got me. Right, I quit, actually. I quit. Oh, no. No, we need you, Connor. We need you, Connor. Justin, I'm out. Okay. You're, you're on your own. Get in here. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Noel, Looney Tunes, who have you got? No idea. Oh, you don't. Okay, nope. Noel. Excellent. <laughs> Noel is playing for James Young. These guys oh, go way great. back. That's why Noel, mm-hmm. Noel knows. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's just joshing, of course. <laughs> um, Chad. Chad, who are you playing for? I'm representing Connor of the uh, – oh, what was that podcast? Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Iron Fist one. The, uh, oh, in what's nice. life is Sons of the Dragon. Excellent. Excellent. And also, uh, Last Sons of Krypton, Superman podcast. Get in there. Plug it in, Ray. Good. Never Connor heard McKen- <laughs> of it. How do you, Ray? You did feeling well. Chad's going to win. <laughs> Chad, yeah. Chad is another Dark Horse. Well, look, I don't know. I, you know I love, why, why? Just because two of Connor's co hosts are here. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, now, Daniel, a very special one. Who are you playing for, my good sir? Well, I'm, I'm playing for me and all the Petrinis out there. You know, yeah, excellent. you got to yes. play to win. Exactly. So Daniel man is of the people, man of the people. Daniel yeah, is playing. Gotta get your lock, Leon, man. Exactly. Go Daniel is playing. He's playing for himself, which is uh, as good as the top attorney there. You have the ability. So good Wait, luck. Best what? of luck, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, uh, and you are playing for Derek O'Neill. Excellent, yeah. Derek. Yay from TV Podcast Industries. Derek, a fantastic podcaster. Uh, best of luck, Derek. Tommy, you, you're in good hands, Derek, uh, with Tommy. I'm sure he's got plenty of knowledge. Uh, Josh, yourself, who are you playing for? Uh, I'm playing for Nelly Owls. Excellent. Owls? I don't know. <laughs> Ex- uh, alias. Um, but anyway, Nelly, again, uh, Josh, as I said, he's a custodian of, of uh, a lot of knowledge. Uh, so you're in you're in good hands there as well. Um, so to listen intently, and finally Phil, the Drop King, who I should mention, hosts a show. I didn't say he plugs out. He hosts uh, the Capes and Lunatics, Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks. Uh, we do a little something at the end of the month as well on Scarlet Spider and the Ultimate Spidercast. Phil, um, I I have to apologize to Ra- Rafael Santos. You're stuck with me. Oh, so Rafael Santos. I've seen I've seen uh, Rafael uh, in and in and around the traps um, for the community. So uh, great to have him on board. And uh, yep. And so guys, you are playing for the prize for this. Whoever gets the most points will be getting a copy of Marvel Monograph: The Art of Declan Shelby. So this is a, a nice little, nice little book um, that has great artwork, obviously. Um, I'm not sure about the writing, but the art's good. No, I'm joking. It's, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, um, well, it's mainly, it's mainly like a, an art book. So um, fantastic stuff there uh, and well worth it. So, yeah, to so everyone. Everyone, is everyone ready? Has everyone got their hands on the buzzers? Oh, oh yeah. I do uh, now. Okay. I'll start to go over here, Ray. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try to keep my eyes up to see who is going to answer first. I'll call out the name and then you have the ability to answer. Okay, first question, round one. Know your Moon Knight. Here we go. What year did Moon Knight first appear in comics? Oh, Rebecca. That was Rebecca. 75. Excellent, Rebecca. Ding, ding. And uh, actually, I've got here as well an extra point if you can give me the uh, the month. <laughs> no, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. That's all right. Um, you got a one in 12 chance. Just swing for it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's all right. Well, it's... Let's go March, my birthday. But no, no. no it's, uh, officially, it is August um, uh, for mostly um, for the records. But um, I think it's actually May. But anyway, <laughs> there we go. Boy. Okay, so Rebecca's. Rebecca's off to a start. Corey, you're winning it so far. Here we go. Round uh, question two. Okay. Mark Spector was known to have a secret entrance to Grant Mansion. Okay. The entrance, Tommy? Uh, swimming pool. Oh, okay. This is where you jump in. You should wait. Okay. Uh, the secret entrance to Grant Mansion, the entrance was via the swimming pool. Where did it end up? Well, I, I think Phil had, had it there. Uh, it ended in the bedroom right in front of uh, a scantily clad Marlene. 
<laughs> well <laughs> done, Phil. There you go. Now, Tommy, you are on the right track. But yeah, classic absolutely. Jeopardy mistake, Tommy. Classic. Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't right. I hear Alex drew back. Let me finish the question. That's mm. it. That's it. Okay. Hands on buzzers. Question three. In West Coast Avengers, Lost in Time and Space, or Time Space, who was apparently responsible for designing the weapons that move? Daniel. Uh, that, that, that would be a Hawkeye, Ray. Well, well done, Daniel. Rebecca, did you get that? No. Oh, I no, I'm just... You kind of, yeah, there you go. I just wanted to see that. I'm just going to say I kind of knew to all any you asked me about. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. okay. Well, Daniel, well done. Daniel gets in there. All right. Moving on to question four, guys. Here we go. Are you loving it? You're living it? Here we go. Plan to win, man. Plan to win. (laughs) Okay. In the Lemire Smallwood run, who was the psychiatrist in the asylum with Mark? Daniel. Um, oh, I'm probably going to uh, butcher how to say it, but um, her name was uh, Dr. Emmett, but she was in reality the crocodile goddess, um, Amit? Am yeah. I saying that right? Yeah, I think that's right. So big, I, I believe. But anyway, that's fine. Dr. Emmett is, is correct. So well done. Well Woo. done, Daniel. Daniel is has hit the lead there. Well done. Woo. Okay, here here we go. Question five, guys. Okay, get ready. What are Conquer Lord's pets of choice? Oh, is that Chad? Chad, I saw you there. Rats. Well the done, boys. Chad. Well done. Connor, you got in just after Chad. Sorry, oh, I did say that. Sorry. <laughs> you gotta give me a chance to flip through my book so I can find these answers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, well, let's, let's wait to Daniel to, have, to look it up. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Here we go. Um, going well. Nice little, nice little number. It's the question six. Here we go. What was the name of Moon Knight's doppelganger in Infinity War? Daniel. Moonshade. Oh, Daniel, well done. That is correct. Moonshade was the evil doppelganger that wanted to take over the the multiverse, right? Um, he was, yeah, which in, in that seminal issue with with all the different Moon Knights. Um, well done, Daniel. Daniel hitting his stride. Here we go. All right. On fire. Got to fire. Got to got just flex your mind and just focus in on Moon Knight. <laughs> Okay, guys, hands on the buzzer or wave, do anything, call out. Here we go. What is Frenchie's real name? Oh, that was Phil, I believe. Uh, is it Jean Paul? Jean Paul? Last name? Last name, yep. Oh, uh, no. Um, oh, no, I'm going to have to give it to <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no. Go for a no. It's Duchamp, just like the artist. Yeah, oh, excellent. Yeah. There we go. Jean Paul, Jean Paul Duchamp. Uh, so that one's one's for no there. Excellent. All right, as we go, hit the halfway mark of round one. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay, there, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... That was my wow. That's halfway through round one. Are you all yeah. right? I'm doing good. good. I've got coffee now. You got coffee. Good, good. Just, you know, inject coffee. Coffee really, powered. Yeah. I really want to see your background now, Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> Once the quiz is over. Okay. So. Okay, here we go. Guys, get ready. Question eight Who was the father? Of Moon Knight's would be sidekick Jeff Wild. Up, oh, Connor. No, Connor, I mean to Connor. That. I've got no idea. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna have to go to Tommy. Oh then. wait, if I could guess. Oh, okay, he... go. Yeah. yeah you no, guess. I just remember he hung out in the water a lot and got thrown through a sewer. That's it. Yeah, him. What's his name? Come on, you've got one in uh, Infinity Chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the bloke with the mallet. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, okay. nice. now, I'm gonna have to no, give it to Josh then. Josh came in second. Josh, what do you got? Uh, that'll be Anton Bogart. Oh, yes. And uh, okay, well then for extra points, you know his his alias. Oh, Midnight Man. Okay, well done, well done. There you go. Um, 
actually it was the other way around block i was after midnight man extra points and tom Moga, but you, you've gone for both that that's good well done extra point there josh um all right question eight in mark specter moon knight issue 25 written by howard mackie who teamed up with moon knight to Phil? ghost rider well done phil oh, yep God. that's it hell yeah are you guys knowing it Do typical you, you know, mackie Typical Mackie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, question 10. Here we go. In Werewolf by Night 32, going way back. What organization hired... Oh, that was Punishu. The committee? Yes, well done, Punishu. Oh. I was it wasn't like the collective or something. I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sizzling here, sizzling. Okay, in, in issue, uh, question 11... We're going here in both the Vengeance of the Moon Knight and the Max Bemis run. What variation of costume do we see from Moon Knight when he's forced? Chad? Is the uh, society's purple? Oh, unfortunately not. No, that is right. But that wasn't in the Vengeance of the Moon Knight. Rebecca? Boxer shorts. Excellent. There you go. <laughs> Box of shorts. Of course um, she would get that. <laughs> I'm, I'm tailored like, for Rebecca. I almost stressed <laughs> out there when I realized I what, what he was asking. And I was like, if I don't get this one right, I might as well just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you mean, Noel. I was, uh, I was, uh, I right. one day. Um, okay, here's a little, okay, this one will require maybe potentially some thought. Okay, here we go. Question 12. In the early days, in the early days, which identity did Marlene prefer? Who was that? That was Tommy. Actually, I think I was maybe second. Second? Okay. Who was first? With I'll hands. take first if nobody's going <laughs> to. It wasn't me. I'm, I'm calling myself out. It wasn't me. I'll, I'll say I was first. You know. right. Yeah. It looked like Daniel to me. Yeah, because Daniel okay. needs points. Um, <laughs> okay, Daniel. Daniel? <clears throat> yeah, I, I believe uh, she preferred Stephen Grant. Well done. Absolutely correct. She preferred the the rich fella as opposed to the dodgy guy or the guy that kills people. Kind of makes sense. All right. <laughs> well, the sensible <laughs> one. Here's the sensible one. Okay. Ish, uh, ish, I keep saying issue. Ep- not episode. Question 13. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, no, it was only water, mind you, Phil. Um, okay, we go. With right. <laughs> Which ex shield agent does Mark Spector employ to help him eventually thwart Count Nefaria's plan? I believe that was Chad. I believe that was Buck Lime. Yes, well done, Chad. Buck Lime. It was a. It's a cool name. That's why I hope. That's why I picked that question. Really, just wanted, just wanted to hear like it again. Like only weakness. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Chad? Sounds like he deserves a margarita. Oh, <laughs> Chad and I were on the same wavelength here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, second last question to finish round one. In West Coast Avengers Annual Number Two, Death and Texas. My favorite issue. <laughs> <laughs> Moon Knight battles the Black Knight. Who wins? And how do they win? Uh, no. Oh, and how do they win? Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I mean, look, you can <laughs> let me know. Let, who wins first? Uh, wait, what was the question? Go to somebody else. <laughs> no, no, come on. Just, Moon Knight know. battles Black Knight. Who wins? Moon Knight. Yep, there you go. I'll give you that. That will be half points. But I, don't I did ask. How. Yeah, I did say how. So if you it's can like remember. Half? Half a point. No. Yeah, it's half I don't a remember. Yeah. I literally just went over it too a couple of weeks ago when you guys did, but I forgot. Yeah. So you can right, give I'm a gonna, half point to someone else. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna open it up to everyone else. Do you know how we're not who's that? Who said that? Chad? Chad. Chad. Yep. Yes, how does how does it happen? He foiled him with his cape. Excellent. Excellent oh, yeah, stuff, right. Chad. He does. Well done. Um, fantastic. Uh, and again, yeah, as Noel uh, mentioned, it was featured in a previous Recent episode. Final question for round one. Know your Moon Knight. 
According to the series Mark Spector Moon Knight, who is Mark's great great grandfather? Mm. Oh, Daniel! Daniel's gone up. Um, I will. Oh my god! Oh, I gotta get my microphone, otherwise you guys can't hear me. Good job, um, Scott. Uh, uh, I believe it is uh, Seth. Well done. Can you give me your last name? Or, but I mean, that's that's fine. I'll take it. I'm, I'm just gonna nod and say yes. Excellent. <laughs> Seth, <laughs> Seth, Seth nodding yes. Hmm. Um, computer. <laughs> Seth, I mean, it, it sounds good to me. Hello, yep. computer. No, Seth is Seth is right. Seth, Seth Falcon. 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 P H. Falcon. Falcon. Yeah. Falcon. I don't know. Yeah, P H A L K O N. Yeah. Yeah, Falcon. Ah. Falcon. There you go. Everyone, that ends round one. Go, go, team. Everyone's going well. I don't know who's winning. Um, I know Daniel's getting there, um, but we've got a fair few. We've got a couple of answers there from Rebecca, Noel, Phil. Everyone's in there. Okay. We're going to Artist Corner now. Double points. So each question was worth 10 points that last round. I'm going up to 20. I'm doing it in. Factors of 10 because, you know, it's very easy for me. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to throw up an image, okay? Now, you've got to wait for the question because it could ask you about anything on that image, okay? So uh, let's, uh, let me do it. Let me just share. Technology, Conchu, please be with me. Okay. Everyone, you, you can see that, yeah? Okay, yes. that's just, just that's just a just a, a placeholder. Um, here we go. Uh, let me let me get the. What's happening? One second. I'm I'm not right. I'm not left-handed, so I gotta. Okay. Also, I could do this perfectly. <laughs> okay, here we go. First picture. You see that? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the question is. In the Jeff Lemire and Greg Smallwood run, of two... was that your hand, Noel? No, I was itching my head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's... oh. Okay, okay. In the Jeff no. Lemire, <laughs> Greg Smallwood run of 2016. I'm on, I'm on the edge here. Uh, which real-life actor did Smallwood portray Frenchie as? Oh, Rebecca. I don't know, but it looks like Luke Evans. Oh, I did. Yeah, uh, not that I've got not on here, but he could maybe he did. I don't know. If, Tommy, Tommy, your hand was up next. Uh, I'm blanking on his first name, but uh, last name Depardieu. No, not um. God, what's his Gerard name? Depardieu? Gerard Depardieu. No, no, he was um. What was he? Um, the guy with the that French lit. No, anyway, that's not him. Anyone else? Takers. No, I know what he's in. <laughs> yeah, I, I know who it is now, but I don't know his name. So, oh, okay. Um, Chad, uh, I can't give oh, you that. Yeah, but Chad. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, he was the ballet was instructor in Black Swan. Correct. Um, Tommy, uh, Tommy. I was just going to say Vincent Price based off of this image, but oh, very close. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, I'm going to have to give a, a a big cross for that one, Vincent Cassell. Was um the yeah, first the one. actor? Yeah. Sure. Okay. No worries. Excellent. Oh, I was gonna um, say John Renault. Oh, he's awesome. He's an awesome actor. Um, but no, French okay. as well. I was gonna say he has a mustache. Or J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I need more pictures. Yeah, more pictures. Here we go. Second question. Wait for the wait for the question. Here we go. What is going on? What is that? Uh, okay. Let me just stop that and start that again. Okay. Oh, that is utter blackness. That is, that is, that is correct. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, no, no points. Black for that, specs though. are walking around at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, uh, soul. my soul. Come on. Why aren't you working? Well, that I'm, one I'm pic- personal ray. Oh, internet. Could be the internet. No. Not damn koalas. Oh my god. Drop bears. Drop just, bear. Um, drop bears. Sorry guys. A little technical difficulty here. You have to double click it, Ray. 
<laughs> I've just lost a picture in this. Oh, okay, don't worry. I'm going to put it in on this screen. Uh, While we're reminiscing for episode 200, yes. I'd like to take you back to one of my favorite moments um, mm -hmm. when we were reviewing the uh, Moon Knight Funko Pop. And Ray wanted to show how it was glowing in the dark. And I think it was me and Chad and Ray. And that he goes, right. I'll just put my computer down and just stops the recording. That's correct. Trying to get his Funko to glow. What? What? <laughs> Why, isn't this... Why isn't this opening? Okay, I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to share this other thing now. Share a portion of the screen. Come on, Ray. Oh, here we go. Okay, you might want to see this then. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's a little image because I can't seem to. Yes. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. Ready. Second question. Name the artist. Tommy. Uh, Tashira. No. Sorry. Um, I know it's a Noel's. Uh, so so bad else? names. names. Tommy, <laughs> can, can I just can I keep going if nobody else is? Yeah, keep going, Tommy. Go have uh, another go. If, uh, Edwards, correct. Yes, it is. First names doesn't matter. I'll give it to you. I'm me, Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah, your first name as well, Tommy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that you, Tommy Lee Edwards. Um, well done. Oh, geez, these these images. But his wife I knew I just right? didn't know his name. I love that's from um that was from like the two mini series. Yep. Yes. The 90s, that was. Right? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely correct. Okay, let me see if this one will pop up. No. So I'm gonna do sorry guys, you're gonna have to work with this uh folder thing majiggy. That was clear enough. Okay, here we go. This will make a great podcast. Okay. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Which issue is this? Panel from oh, Tommy. Sorry, I, I, that's, I'm blanking on the, the name of the story, but that's definitely a Moon Knight annual. That is correct. Yes. Do you know the the name? It's, 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 um... Oh, hang on. I think I got it. Sorry, I uh, I cut out there for a sec. Um, what was that? What was that, Tommy? Did you say? Can you please repeat? Yeah, I don't. I don't have the full title, but definitely a Moon Knight annual. Okay, two thousand six oh. era and Ooh. something with Christmas. That's true. That's true. I'll have to ask Chad. I think it's Silent Night, Deadly Night with Kate. Well done, well done. Uh, close, close there, there, Connor. Very close. Um, but I'll... I had the wrong annual anyway, so it's fine. Oh, okay. Everyone's a winner. Okay. No, so... you didn't. Oh no, you didn't. Did, no, did no, it's carry on. Carry on. Oh, okay. Um, geez, these 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 images are going great. Okay, question four. Again, this this is a bit small. Let me exp make it. Can I make it larger there? Okay, here we go. We're not going to judge you for size, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, are we doing name. small wood yet? No, not not yet. <laughs> no, oh, Chad, you're not on yet. No, small wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay th this is another one okay i'll give you the question now before I, I put it up um name the artist and again extra points if you can tell me um oh no, no let me just oh yeah if you can tell me what moon knight is asking crawley for okay let's see that what's the follow-up question right now uh, who's the artist uh, Phil, Phil, and, and what is Moon Knight asking of Crawley? I would guess information. That's true. What, who's the artist, though? Um, uh, Phil? Uh, oh. I can only give you five, Phil, because that was the second. That was extra points. Who gets the 20 points can tell me who the artist is. Tommy? Uh, Bill Sienkiewicz? No, sorry. Mm. Phil um, again. It's not Smallwood, is it? <laughs> no kind of shoe that isn't isn't is it uh last name torres right what's the, oh what's you're the getting you're getting close and i'm gonna stick with it because i need you guys to get to get this one mm -hmm. um no it's almost close you, you're on the right track there kind of shoe think of ooh, ooh. that run and all the different artists there 
Okay, so it's not Torres, it's the other mate. Come on, yeah. yes, say it. Say Connor, you know uh, you want to. Uh, Scream right, it out. I do want to. To I the just top of the mountain. Remember it. Uh. Anyone else? Anyone? I'm going to have to stop. Bank. Something with a G. Rebecca. <laughs> so Rebecca Franca gone. Villa. There you go. Rebecca, nice. 20 points. Francesco Connor Franca really Villa. Gave me it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Connor's. Well, Phil's got a bit of there. This is how this works. Yeah. Okay, look, I'll, get, I'll give you guys 10 points each. How's that? Thank you. 10 points there. Perfect. Connor and Phil gets a five points for the uh, the information. Um, mm-hmm. That was actually, in hindsight, Phil, that was quite generic, that answer that you <laughs> gave me. Um, <laughs> Two and a half the, points. The real answer was Just... Intel for Midnight Man. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's asking for information. I can't say that you're wrong. So, exactly. so there, there you go. Oh. Um Offhand, I mean, in the past, he has asked Crowley for painkillers. So, yeah, my mind did yes. go to drugs for some reason. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's not let's pursue that. Not so much <laughs> Give me my effing pills. <laughs> yeah, I recall that with the Black Knight duel. Oh, yes, drugs are plenty. Heady days, those ones. Um, here we go. Question five. And I want you to please let me know. What happens? Oh God, I wish you wish you could open this one. Um, <laughs> uh, hang on, I am going to. I'm going to persevere, and I'm going to. I'm going to open this one. Okay. Um, I want you to tell me what happens next. You see that? Tommy. I got it. Um, Mark and his other personalities fist fight himself in the middle of a park in boxer shorts. Oh, um, you got the right series wrong, though. Chad, you had that, though. You had it next. I believe they're about to uh, start torturing him on the Isle of Ra. Excellent, Chad. Oh, excellent. excellent. You've actually answered both. The extra points was if you can tell me where Mark is. So well done. Woman with hot knitting needles, tortures Mark, semicolon, Isle of Ra. Well done. Well done, Chad. Four points there. Extra points. What's that? Another 10 points. 30 points. Wow. Fantastic. Okay, here we go. Last question for this round. This sizzling round. Here we go. Um, I'm going to do this sharing thing again. Okay. I would like you to name the artist. Okay. And then I'll give you the second extra thing. If you can uh, name the artist for me, please. Here we go. One, two, three, go. Oh, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. And then Phil, Tommy and Phil. Bill Sienkiewicz. No, sorry. Phil. <sighs> that was going to be my guess. Oh, no. Oh, who was that? Rebecca. Doug Munch. Oh, no. Close, close. Who's there? Come on, anyone else? Oh, Tommy. You... Tommy, Tommy. Tommy, right? Next guess, next guess uh, Don Perlin. No, 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 no. Um, I'll give you a clue here, and I'm not um, leaning towards anyone here. Noel, uh, yeah, we, just, we, we reviewed so this issue. Names. I know who. Yeah. yeah. We, we talked about Moon Knight's butt on this one. So yeah, <laughs> if you can okay. remember. I'm so, nope. I don't remember names of anybody. Nope. Who are you? Okay. <laughs> Did you pronounce your last name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay, <laughs> no one, no one. I'm going to have to go. No? Any last seconds? Oh, Daniel, yeah, Daniel, yeah. Daniel, sorry. Daniel? Uh, uh, Dennis Cohen? Oh, there you go. Dennis, yep, okay. Oh, yes. Cool. Well done, Dennis Cohen. Not to be Good job, mistaken, Daniel. not to be mistaken with his brother Leonard. Uh, and also, extra points, if you can oh, tell me. The origin of the blacksmith. How did he come to be, Daniel? Yep. I mean, well, this is this is your, your first go. So, yes. Oh, well, yeah. Again, just so happy to be able to place on the board here. You know, <laughs> you just got to play one. Um, blacksmith was sort of a no name, low level goon in prison who yep. read news articles about Moon Knight and was like, oh, well, that's how you make a name for yourself. You've got to have a gimmick. So well somehow he inexplicably is able to make weaponry in the prison like workshop and like the guards are just like, oh, he's making like these tongs that like 
That's it. Super heat up to burn people's flesh off. Oh yeah, that's fine. It's part of his therapy. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct there. Give the man a gold star. Full points. Yeah, exactly. And you even mentioned the super hot self-heating forceps. Uh, So very impressed there. Very impressed there, Daniel. And that ends round two, everyone. (laughs) Proud. <laughs> my, my co-host is very happy. Oh, excellent. We cats are no strangers to the show. Okay. <laughs> All right. We are going into round three, guys. Here we are. Come on, Josh. Come on, lift those feet. Come on, soldier. Here we go. Now, this is into the knowledge. Uh, this is all to do with ITK episodes, guys. This is your forte. You came on the show hand chosen because you have been on the episodes you have been on the show you know your your sh- sizzle so question one okay oh yeah i've got to i've got to get um got to get the audio ready that cohen yeah. art out of here okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay um okay and i will get that one okay here we go um all right first question Oh, oh, it's a bit, a bit weird. Uh, okay, first question. In episode 50 of Into the Night, the co-hosts Ed head to the Isle of Ra to meet special guest Jason Burrows. What superpower does Konishu obtain in order to make it to the island? What super <laughs> Konishu? Don't I just swim real fast? Well, come on, Connor. I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll throw you a bone here. Yes, you do. But what do you do in order to swim real fast? Oh, kick my legs. Yes, in a way. Yes. Oh. Um, I'm going to give it to you, Connor Shu. I'm going to give it to you. No, I want to see what Rebecca says first. No, she had a okay, but Rebecca. I'm going to give it. To, I'm going to give it to you, Connor Shu, anyway. So, but yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. That there. Um, okay, uh, Rebecca. Yes. I just wanted him to be turned into a shark. <laughs> well, he turned into something. I'll say that. Uh, uh, Chad, Chad, you... Um, a boat? <laughs> yes, Chad, what was your, what was your answer? Was that, it I did. astral projection? That was you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> dolphin. Um, Maybe it's a dolphin. I'm giving it to Connor because you did say as well boat. So, Connor, let's have a listen to what happened to, to you. If I can... Here we go. Come on. Work for me here. Here we go. Um, question. You just oh, have yeah. to listen to myself on my own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Thanks, Conchu. You know who I truly am on the inside. A robot that turns into a submarine. Oh, there you go. No. Oh, he's got <laughs> the there you go. Um, Conchu turns into a submarine. But I'll give you full points there, Connor. Um, because that was you know, nudge nudge, that was your question. <laughs> anyway, here we go. <laughs> uh, second second question of round three. Hi priest of Conchu, Rebecca. Oh Connor, sorry, you've still got your hand up. Um oh, just, no, just answer, don't answer. worry about it. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. High priest of high priest of Conchu, Rebecca made her first appearance on Into the Night in episode seven, titled We Need to Talk About That Moon Copter. What does Rebecca attribute to her introduction to Moon Knight? How did Rebecca get Rebecca? Surprisingly. My sister. Oh, let, let's have a listen and uh, see if indeed, Rebecca, you are right about yourself. Getting used to the three Skype business. Rebecca, how did you <laughs> That's sort of it. get into Moon Knight? What was your big introduction? Uh, my sister's a massive fan. My older sister. There you go, Rebecca. Well done. Full points for that yeah. one. Jeez. Yeah, and you were worried at the beginning. What's going on? Here we go. <laughs> um, question three. Okay, here we go. I've got to keep my eyes on all, all eight panels. Name all the podcasts involved in the Damnation crossover event. Ooh. Who did yes. we podcast? Apart from that. Oh, Phil. Uh, of course, Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Uh, okay. Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. Uh Inner Demons. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there one more? There's one more. There were four. Oh, was it was it the Name War podcast? Come on, Phil. I'll you, I'm going to throw you a bone here again. Just uh, give it another go. You were almost there. Throw me a freaking bone here. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
I think Rebecca's next. No, I think Connor. Oh, Connor. Okay, Connor. So, uh, sorry, Phil. I'll just hold you in there. Look, you've got um, three quarters of it. So, I'll give you that. Connor, Connor Shu, can you? Um, uh, last one, we're good mates at the Defenders TV podcast. Well done. There you go, Connor Shu. So, uh, yep. So, 15 and five there, Connor Shu. Actually, Phil, I was actually going to mark you wrong because we were into the night, a Moon Knight podcast back then. So, sorry, Percent. zero points for you. Zero. <laughs> sorry, that's oh, <laughs> oh, respect <laughs> the history. <laughs> so, no, only joking. Um, you're in. Okay, here we go. Uh, Question four, the Isle of Ra sessions has proven to be a staple for the show where guests come on to talk about their top four desert island books. Okay. Who was first on the official Isle of Ra show back in episode 40? Tommy. I'm going to go with Chad. Oh, no. Sorry. Connish you. Sorry. Sorry, Tommy. Was it Tommy? No, Tommy. No, Tommy's actually not done one. He's unofficially kind of done one because we did. Talk Tommy, about come on, yeah. Go I know. Back in time. Get... Let's change this. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? Josh, you want to get in? Who was that? Chad? Chad, who what did I think it was you, Ray? No, it wasn't. I came in a bit late. No, but to try uh, working towards my um, my narcissistic side. Um, Josh, <laughs> your your uh, your, your uh, attempt. Here we go. I think it was it the other Connor. Yes, it was. Well done, uh, Josh. Excellent. Ooh, other work. Connor, the other Connor, and uh, John, uh, Josh. I'm going to open it up to you here. Extra points if you can name any of Connor's top four books. Oh, <laughs> you don't geez. have to, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rebecca, yeah, no, no. Okay, Rebecca, Rebecca, here for uh, just the extra points. Um, born again. Ooh. I'm just guessing. Okay. Born again. Uh, whatever happened guys. to the Man of Tomorrow? Uh, what's the, no, the that famous was... Superman one? Yeah, that. Well, now now you've spoiled it. That was Phil. Yeah, you're exactly. you're one. They're all going to be Superman <laughs> or Daredevil. I'll tell <laughs> yeah. you. That. Phil, what, is there an Iron Fist in there somewhere? No, Phil. Oh, you crash and oh. burn there, Phil. Guardian. Uh, Connor Shu. Connor Shu. Was it an uh, All Star Superman issue? That's, that's was, the yeah. one. No. I was it wasn't? Uh, no, it wasn't. No, actually. So, okay, no extra points there. That will go to – so this one goes to Josh. Uh, you're right, Rebecca. There was a Daredevil, 304. Um, mm. uh, oh. oh, hang on. I forgot to – oh, bloody hell. Anyway, oh, I'll forget that audio. Um, but, yes, it was kind of <laughs> – Superman, Peace on Earth. Uh, you also picked that annual, Rebecca, you're talking about. Um, Superman Annual Volume 1, Issue 11. I think it's the man who has everything. Oh yeah, yeah. For the oh, man who has one. Okay. That's one of my yeah. favorites. Uh, I was close. <laughs> Mate, you're close. You were close. Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you two points there, Rebecca. Why not? Thanks. Why not? Um. Okay. Question five. Now, Ray, remember to hit the button. Remember hit the audio. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Into the night, episode one hundred. Come on, guys. You must know that one. Titled Looney Palooza was a bumper milestone show, clocking in at over four hours. It contained interviews, giveaways, and serial adventures. In addition to this, some loonies sent in their dear conch shoes. What did Josh Geronimo ask? <laughs> uh, any takers there? Um, uh, Josh doesn't even know. How we... <laughs> I, I don't even remember doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, fine. Um Okay, cool. Let, let, let's just hear. I mean, I'm not too sure. Let's just hear who. who There's two what, front teeth. What did you what you ask? Oh. Dear Conshu, my name is Josh Geronimo Johnson. And does it piss you off that the Inhumans live on your domain? There you go. <laughs> so Josh asked about the Inhumans living on Conchu's domain. There you go. Now um, I'm going to throw it out to everyone. Now it's open to everyone for extra points. If anyone can tell me. If you can guess what the host's responses were to this, because we had to answer. It was a dear country. We had to answer the question. So any any ideas? Uh, you can... Okay, Daniel. Yes. I'm, I'm going to say, uh... oh, man. Um, I'm going to say he wasn't just uh, because they were paying rent. Okay. Okay, it's good that yeah. Sorry, Phil and Phil, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say I believe High Priest the Conchu Ray probably made a, a uh, 
not so funny joke about real estate and then giggled at the schoolgirl. <laughs> you, you'd probably be right about the not so funny joke. Uh, Rebecca, any ideas as well? No, but I know how I would answer it now, and that would be to say that Konshu appreciates having Lockjaw on his domain, so everything else is forgiven. Well, let's have a listen. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think Konshu would mind. No. I think I. Yeah. I think he would have allowed it to happen. Like, you know, why not? Probably would have gotten more you know. followers that way. Live on the moon, yeah. join the cult. So pulling the strings. Get a little... B- yeah. There's your unfunny joke. Your converts. Well, if you get Black Bolt on your side, he's a pretty... And Medusa, I mean, pretty heavy hitters. Yeah. Crystal. Oh, gosh, right. Crystal's huge, like... Look, really, Lockjaw. Just sounds like you've got a crush, Ray. There you go, Lockjaw. No, I just want to, yeah, well, yeah, I, I do. I, I have a big crush on Black Bolt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <do I. laughs> uh, Medusa, oh, yeah, yeah, Medusa as well. Um, uh, yeah, Rebecca, yeah, you hit it on the nail there. I, you came in a little late there. I was going to give five points to Phil, five to Daniel. Yeah, no, I think um, that's fair. I was just saying, I was just thinking how I would answer it now. So it wasn't yes. really based on knowledge. <laughs> but you did, but you did, and that was exactly, that was good. So there you go, uh, five points each for you. Question six, okay? Sticking to episode 100, the hosts discussed who they wanted to see helm the next Moon Knight series. Who did Chad name as his writer of choice? Who did Chad name he wanted to oh, have was write? Like 2018? 2019? Yeah, 2018, 2019. Chad, yes. Chad, yep. Here we go. Did I say McFarlane? Uh, Connish you next, and then Rebecca. Um, no, Chad. No, no, no. Damn. Not, unfortunately. Connish you. Uh, himself? No, <laughs> no. Uh, Rebecca? <laughs> Matt Rosenberg. Uh, cl- close. And Tommy, we're, just, we're going to end it out with Tommy's there. Danny Gates. No, but they're all good answers. I'm giving you all guys five points each. That's really good. Let's hear what Chad, who Chad wanted to uh, to helm the Moon Knight series. Uh, Chad, who would you want? Uh, this is a big one. Who would you want to see helm the new series then? Honestly, I I really want to see Jason Aaron's do it. I read all through his yeah. Thor, like um... up to now, and I just really need that kind of, I don't know, grandiose storytelling. Because up until now, it's been like kind of just Moon Knight related. There you go. Chad, do you still Man. wish for Jason Aaron? Do <laughs> you still wish that about Chad? Fuck that, Chad. <laughs> it's not Chad's fault. <laughs> so that happened. Uh, it's amazing how, how innocent we were. Like Jason Aaron was an excellent, an excellent call back then. That it was. Yeah. But that's obviously why none of us can think of it now. Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, question seven. Okay, and this is in no way pandering towards people. Uh, in question seven, when did Deleter's song List of Demands premiere as the Into the Night opening theme tune? <laughs> I love I love Noel's reaction. When did Delete Chad? Was that like episode? episode- 110, 120. Oh, no. And uh, uh, kind of close, I guess. Uh, Connish you. Uh, I was just going to say episode 100. No. Uh, Tommy and then Phil. Uh, episode 50. Close. Oh, I'm, actually, we might just go who's closest. Uh, and then Phil. Uh, I'll just guess episode 75. Oh, okay. Episode 68. I think that's Phil then. Yeah. Um, so that's close. Uh, and... Special points, extra points here, Phil, if you can tell me who was a special guest on this very special show. Episode uh, 68. Was, was it Nor? No, no. Nor was, uh, he came in a bit later there. Um, anyone else? I'm going to throw it out there. Extra points. Uh, I'll give a little clue. Tommy, you were on that episode. Uh, Max Bemis. There you go, Tommy. Points for you there, Tommy. Max Bemis was on there. Probably one of our most unpopular episodes, only because the audio was bad. <laughs> um, actually got a roasting on one of the ratings because, uh, yeah, they, they gave us like one or two stars or something because uh, the audio. But, you know, it's a learning experience. Oh, 
Exactly, exactly. All right, okay. Question eight, guys. Here we go. Halfway, halfway through this uh, big round. <clears throat> the Into the Night serial adventure, The Hunt for Conscious Golden Scepter, is carving its own universe um, based on real life loonies who are part of the ITK community. Tommy plays the man on the street. What is the name of the bar Tommy visits in order to meet up with his informant, Gabe? <laughs> Damn it, Tommy. Uh, Tommy, did you, did you raise your hand there? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to see if I have that script buried somewhere. On my computer. <laughs> uh, Phil, Phil, Phil's got uh, to come in. The Ray Ray Bar and Grill. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to give you points for that one just because, again, pandering towards the host. Well done. Um, <laughs> oh, we're like <laughs> you look right on that butt, kids. That's how you get the points. <laughs> um, okay. Well, okay, I'll give that oh. one to Phil. Yep, sorry. Oh, wait. No, that's the, that's the cult. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I had to give that one to Phil, but it's open. The extra points is open. If you can tell me what is the item that Gabe brings into the bar. What is Gabe carrying? Daniel. Oh. I believe it was a map. Look, I'm going to give you, because you tried. That's very good of you, Daniel. I'm going to give you five points there. Phil, okay. Uh, Wait, what are you? Gracious host. Uh, uh, <laughs> marijuana for Tommy. Okay, that's another five for Phil. Okay, I'm going to stop now before I give everyone points. Uh, it was a teapot. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it all. Um, okay, excellent. Here we go. Question nine, guys. I don't. I really don't know who's winning because I'm throwing points around here. Episode nine. In episode 192, an idle chat on crossover events. Special co-host Daniel Doing talks about a particular character. Who is Daniel? Oh, hey, you got to listen to this. Sorry, sorry. That makes sense if you actually listen to it. Who is Daniel um, referring to about this character? Um, okay. Here we go. I, I love how they take these characters that usually just get like tossed around like ragdolls by Chad. Like, the Avengers. Chad put his hand. Chad Chad's gone up. I believe it was the telephone operator. No, I know who you're talking about. That's more just in the owls. Daniel, you, you raised your hand. Ah, <laughs> oh no, I'll, I'll I'll let I'll let it finish playing. <laughs> okay oh okay I, I might have to restart it okay we go and they show the fact that like oh holy crap they actually are like super powered beings and you've got a former french legionnaire and a guy with possible did going up against him yeah and you see like like they they seem like a joke in like the grand scope of things but like if you're at a street level thing these guys are like there's a reason they're like Bill. Uh, as a count nefaria oh close i'm tempted to give you more points phil but I'm, I'm hoping someone will get this daniel um i believe we were talking Chad. about like um oh uh oh man i'm blanking on his name uh <laughs> Th thunderstrike i believe it was very close. I can't give that one. Let's have a listen to what it was. Uh, oh, sorry, Chad. I'll give you one one chance. Chad? Was it Killer Shrike? There you go. Chad's got it. Chad's got it. There you go. Killer Shrike. Right. Let's hear it. And also, incidentally as well, Daniel, I think later on, one of uh, the fan favorites, a Killer Shrike, a mutant. There you go. There you go. Uh, well done, Chad. Well done. Um, all right, are we how are you going? No, are you right? Stretching the legs, excellent, excellent. You won't want to miss this one. <laughs> Question 10. Here we go <laughs> for episode 150, milestone episode. The collective cometh. Who was the special guest on episode 150? Mm. Josh, this is where I put you. Yep. Was it Tom Brevoort? Yeah, you go, Josh. Well done. Big Gosh. points there, Josh. Tom Brevoort. And I will give you extra points if you can name, I'm going to say, at least two of the, the series that he has on his pull list or his reading. Oh. Uh, I have no idea. 
No, no worries. No worries. Um, let me just, uh, sorry, I forgot. To... Um, we have with us uh, executive editor as well as senior vice president of um, publishing at Marvel Comics, uh, associate editor, editor. He does it all, Tom Brevoort. Tom, well, there you go. There you go, Tom. Well done. Okay, question 11. Here we go. We are, we are in the home stretch here. In bonus episode, a bonus episode on Delita on the Other Void EP. According to Noel, what band did the show uh, did the show Portlandia and weren't good live, opposed to their recordings? <laughs> no, that's not the reaction. That was. Tommy, swooping in, I'm muted, buddy. Yeah, Tommy. Oh, sorry. Muted. Oh, sorry, Tommy's was muted. It, was it the Decemberists? No, but I'll you give you some that, points man. there. What a punch I'll give you, I'll give you Decemberists. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you five. Um, no? I don't, who, what was the question? Who, who did the show? <laughs> yeah, what, what band did the show Portlandia? And they weren't, and they aren't good live um, as opposed to the actually recording. We're talking about how bands are shit, like when they're live sometimes, you know, opposed <laughs> to the actual albums. Chad, what does it have to do with Portland? Danzig, Danzig. Look, Chad, I'm going to give you one. Uh, you mentioned Chad one. Doesn't fellow. always come back to Danzig. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Danzig was on Portlandia, so oh, okay. So Biafra. Yeah, he's good though. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, you mentioned one of the band members from this band was on Portlandia. Let's have a listen. Okay, I'll give him points to uh, Tommy and Chad for this. Uh, just for their remarks, but let's go for let's have a listen to what what you had to say. No, that's Can't very disappointing. And sometimes yeah. that's that's cool, you know. Oh. Like, there, do you remember there used to be a band? They've come back again now, but called Sleaterkinny. No, 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 no. Yeah, there was a band here from the states called Sleaterkinny. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of them actually did that show called Portlandia with the. Okay. Oh, there you go. Ray just kind of like uh, NFI, but then I'll uh, mm-hmm. Sleaterkinny. I'm going to look them up. Yeah, I'm going to listen to them. She's <laughs> on the freaking show. I should remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Tommy and Chad. Yeah. Okay. Question 12 in the ITK serial, the hunt for countries, golden scepter. Who are the three deities that Chad runs into whilst in outer space? It's an old one. It's in episode four. <laughs> okay. Um, Chad, did you, did you, well, no, Phil. Okay. Well, you would know, uh, Phil, no? yeah. Just a guess here, because uh, I can't remember. Jack Daniels, Johnny Walker. And- <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to give you. Um, oh, hey, Connor, you, you're in there. Uh, Danzig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I have for that joke. <laughs> all right, no worries. I'm going to give both of you ten points each. That was good. Um, it was it was uh, Thoth, Horus, and Maat. Now, Phil, you are actually playing the role of. Both, both, both. He's coffee. <laughs> coffee. But anyway, I love that. I love that. Ribbon, ribbon, uh, ribbon, Chad, there. It's always, it always gives points. We love you, Chad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, question 13. In the first episode of Roundtable Robin, featuring Phil, Josh, and Chad, all you guys are here. So come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh god okay this is a question what are the only superman comics josh won't read i oh, would read sorry what are the only superman comics josh yep here we go either ones where he's dead or his origin stories well let's have a listen i think you're right josh i mean you did say it so the only superman stories that i like are either origin stories which i haven't read the year one one i'm not going to but origin stories or i like the death of Superman and the reign of the Superman. Yeah. Like- there you go. There you go. Well done, Josh. There, got it. Um, well done. 20 points for you. Uh, I okay. my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Question 14 in episode 114 of the Isla Ra sessions. The truth is out there, but I missed it. Who did Derek from TV podcast industries and Ray meet face to face to have a chat with in the Isla Ra? Who did Derek and Ray meet on Derek's Isle of Ra? Chad. Was it Mephisto? No, I think we probably did. Um, uh, Noel? Is it Kanshu? 
No. Oh, he pops up every now and again. I missed. There was another person that put their hand up. There's Daniel then? I, I, I believe it was the Sun King. No. Good, good guess. Um, mm. Who are those three? Uh, and Rebecca, rounding it out. Nick Fury. Oh, well done. <laughs> let's done it. Yes. Let's have a let's have nice. a listen. Rebecca. Um uh hello. Hello, Nick. About damn time. How are you? Yes, we- there you go. There you go. Nick Fury makes an appearance on the Isle of Ra. Well done, Rebecca. Full points, 20 points. Um, okay, second last question of this round in episode 111, 111. Legs 11 plus another one. Uh, of September 2019, Acts of Vengeance, a lot of bad and a lot of good. What were the first Acts of Vengeance issues that Josh read? Phil? Was it Spider-Man? No, Josh, you come in. Sorry, Phil. Uh, it would have been, well, it would have been the Moon Knight issues. Well done there. A cheeky little question there from Ray. I snuck it in, Moon Knight being the answer there. I'm pretty proud of myself. But there you go, uh, Josh. Well done. Well done, Josh. Okay. He's, he's picked up at a big swag of 20 points. And last but not least, question 16, the last round, the last question of this round in the April Fool's episode of 2020, who did Ray swap with in hosting Phil? Uh, that would be the biggest April Fool myself. That, that, well done, <laughs> Phil. And you are allowed this extra points question if you can tell me who you, co-host, who you co-hosted with. Um, was it Tommy? Oh my gosh! I'm going to open up to everyone else. Come on, Phil. Um, anyone else? It wasn't Tommy. Okay. Josh. Josh. Josh Chad. had it. Chad. No. 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 Chad. No. Chad, you got it. What have you got? Chad. Josh, go for it. No, no, no. Josh said. Oh no! I thought Josh, your answer was Chad, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I guess. Oh yeah, Chad. no, yeah, no, no. It wasn't. Wasn't Chad. Chad, what was your answer? Gonna go with Lilith. No, Fire. no. Shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm gonna give you all you guys um three points each. Three points each there. Um, I don't even remember who was. I think it was Phil. Was it Josh? Chad? Anyone else want three points? So throw, throw me a name. <laughs> go, Daniel. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll say uh, Moon Knight himself. Moon Knight. Co-host. Okay, Daniel, you get three. And Tommy to round it out. Who else? Connor. Uh, Connor Shu. Oh, and Connor as well. Um, no, not no. Connor, show you last one. Did did you put well, your hand up? No, <laughs> not even a fan in the hand. I'm sorry. No, oh, give, give it a go. <laughs> okay, no worries. It was Dustin. Dustin. Uh, uh, Dustin. Cold case, Kurtz. He's a big Batman fan, so he wanted to come on the show. Talk to you, Phil. Um, alrighty, there. That ends round three, everyone. Well done. A lot of points had. That's brilliant. Okay. <clears throat> now. This is, you know, the last question of the whole game. This could sway your result. Triple points, 30 points, 30 big points for this last question. It's a who am I? Okay, so listen carefully. I'll be looking out for any hands. <clears throat> who am I? I was born on the 10th of August, 1973. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and graduated from Bellamine, Bellamine College Preparatory in San Jose, California. I wrote my first novel while completing a Bachelor of Arts degree from Harvard University and a Master's from Trinity College, Oxford in Shakespearean Tragedy. At Harvard, I studied under psychologist Jordan Peterson, who would later influence my style of writing. Apart from writing, I found success in both pole vaulting and soccer during my college years. Any takers? I'm a New York Times connoisseur. Oh, wow. Go. Oh, I was just going to guess Jeffrey Wilde. (laughs) Jeffrey Wilde. I'm going to keep you on on there, Connor. Just you might get some points there. Phil? Complete guess, Charlie Houston. I'm going to give may may give you a little a few oh. little points there. Keep on going. Um, apart from writing, I found success in. Oh, sorry, I'm a New York Times bestselling author for fifteen. Tommy, 
Brian Michael Bendis? No, oh, no, no, but I'm, you, don't worry, you're going to get some points. Um, 15 of my novels and my books have been shortlisted for Best Novel of the Year by the International Thriller Writers. Nom- Chad? Charlie Houston. Oh, we said that. Someone said that. So I'm going to have to Shit. deduct deduct points for you, Chad. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> no, really joking. Um, nominated for the CWA, Ian Fleming, Steel Dagger, Conishu. Is that Greg Hurwitz? Yes, that is nice. it. 30 points, Greg Hurwitz. It was the well, novels. Done. That was it. The novels, yes, yes. He's written comics, notably Batman the Dark Knight, uh, done Wolverine, Punisher, Full Killer, Moon Knight. He's written TV shows for V, uh, episodes for V and Queen of the South. And his novel, Orphan X, was picked up by Warner Brothers with Bradley Cooper to direct. So well done, Connor. Well done. Uh, big, big 30 points there. But hang on, who... Um, but you, you chimed in earlier on as well. I'll give you more points for that. Phil, Chad, Tommy, all had some. I'll give you five points each. Um, well done. All right, um, loonies, that is the end of the game show. A massive, a massive thank you for everyone there. Look, we're going to take a quick short break. I've got to tell you these points. And when we come right back, I will announce the winner as well as announce the winner for the, the prize giveaways. And we'll wrap up the show Um well, we'll go on to the next segment. But anyway, catch you shortly. Hey there. I'm sure you know about the Capes and Lunatics podcast, but have you heard about the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast? It's a fun home for classic and new reviews of just about everything. We have the Ultimate Spider Cast, where we cover everything Spider Man, the Quantum Zone, where we talk the classic Marvel character Quasar and do deep dives on the cosmic side of Marvel. We also have Comic Capers, where we cover everything old and new in comics. It could be anything, any company, any decade. And we also have our Media Mondays, where we cover some kind of TV show, be it a Arrowverse uh, current hit or our summer specials, where we do reviews of uh, classic episodes of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spinoff Angel. So, if you're a fan of pop culture and media, you should really check it out. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Yes, everyone, welcome back to our massive episode 200. The game show has ended. The game show to end all game shows, face or no face. I think in Connor Shoe, that's what you called it. Let's call it that. Um, <laughs> I, we have the winners here. Oh, the winner. And, and let's start from the bottom. Unfortunately, there always has to be a bottom. Um, well, <laughs> otherwise, there's no top. <laughs> um, let's not. Me and Connor are going to lose it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the leader on the other end of the table, let's call it that. Um, Noel, you came in with 15 points. Well done, Noel. Well done, Noel there. Um, I checked out like an hour ago, so it's okay. <laughs> working upwards, 35 points, Tommy. Tommy, you gave it a good stab, a good go. Well done, Tommy. Uh, 35, um, made it up there in the ranks. Uh, from that as well, we've got, actually, then it goes up to, with 85 points, we have Rebecca. Rebecca, very respectable. 85 points for you. Well done. Hey, you um, close on top of that was uh, with 90 points, Connor Shoe. Connor Shoe. Yay, well done. Us. 90 points. Um, then we have on 93 points, Daniel. Daniel, who was leading the charge for a long. Daniel, 93. Well done. A valiant effort. Well done. Uh, gotta play to win, man. Gotta play to win. Gotta, gotta play to win, exactly. Very close behind that 98. Josh. Josh, you did well. Uh, Josh, Josh picked up a lot of big scores there. Uh, a lot of them came from round two, I think, two or three. Um, well done. 98 there. Uh, and so I guess we'll announce who came first and second. There's only two of them left. Um, I'll announce first then. First, with 108 points, the first place winner is. None other than the power of Chad, 108. Chad, well done. Um, yes, Phil, you got 103. Very close, um, 103. So 
Well done, everyone. So, Chad, uh, who who were you uh, playing for again? I was playing for the uh, <sighs> Sons of the Dragon, Connor. Yeah. Connor. Connor McKenna. Oh, Connor. Nice. Fixes well, it. <laughs> <laughs> called, well, I called it. Well done, Connor. You will receive uh, the Marvel monograph, The Art of Declan Shelby. No Iron Fist, no Superman. I'm sorry in there but hopefully maybe a bit of daredevil i think so um i hope you enjoy that yeah so well done a big thank you big thank you guys everyone that was um so much fun i hope you um i hope you enjoyed it i hope you made you made you think ready for the day got you started you know was your caffeine um a big thank you we haven't ended it there though as well we've got another prize giveaway and again i'm just going to show everyone i've got this okay so this is there's two of them so quickly um i've got Six little paddle pop sticks. They've each got the names of the people that have entered. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to give it a shuffle. And this is for one of the Moon Knight pins, um, courtesy of Disruptor Disc Designs and Media Patrol. Uh, thank you so much. So the winner of this one is... Man, I love tin. <laughs> oh, um, Bobby Lounges. Um, he is... Yeah. Bushman, Bushman from the Moon Knight four page. Well done, Bobby. Uh, your answer is indeed correct. Moon Knight 30 was the issue that the panel that I put up a while ago uh, was from. So well done, Bobby. Uh, you are getting a pin from, uh, yes, Disruptor Disc Designs, Media Patrol. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, finally, as well, there was an automatic entry for Petrunis. Uh, so, Daniel, you're in the running again. Daniel has actually been in the running for all of these prizes because you actually were in for that one there. Um, so Daniel has a one in three chance of, of winning. Uh, so, of <laughs> <laughs> so there are the three. I'm going to say it right now. These are the top level Petrunis. Uh, so three pieces of paper. Daniel, Derek again, Derek O'Neill and Justin the Al Osgood. You're all in the running. Let me throw away these, these paddle pop six. Three of them. In they go. Little swizzle, swizzle. And the winner of the limited edition Media Patrol Moon Knight pin goes to, let's open it up. I'll put it on the camera for people. Justin Osgood. Uh, sorry, Daniel. Sorry about that. Well done, Justin the Owl. So you are getting a limited who? Who was it? I didn't win for you, but you technically still won. So you and he's me. Still, he's still this. won. Yes. This. So well done, Justin. Um, a limited edition. Yeah, Justin. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> um, you are you are getting one of the one of those pins. Thank you all again. A a, a big thank you um to all the contestants. Uh, really appreciate your time, Tommy. A big thanks for setting up the the Zoom conference slash meeting. Uh, it worked wonders. It worked well, apart from Ray's inability to handle technology. Uh, it was, it was fine. It's great. Um, right now also as well, then, uh, we're going to throw it. I haven't finished yet. I'm going to throw it now to a pre-recorded chat with one of a, a very special guest, um, that I think everyone will be happy to hear from. Um, I had, uh, I certainly had a lot of fun chatting with them, so I'm going to throw it now, throw it to them now. Yes, Looney listeners, we have a very special treat for you for the 200th episode uh, and uh, to, I don't know, to see in this uh, milestone episode, uh, I'd like to introduce a very special guest, uh, Declan Shelby. Declan, welcome to the show. How's it going? I was like, ooh, special. Oh, no, that's, it's not for me. <laughs> oh, it is. There's a special treat. Who's, who, what's that going to be? Like, oh, wait, it's me. It's you. Yeah, far out. Um, I know a lot of Looney fans, Declan, seriously, um, in our ITK community, in the internet, into the night community, uh, a lot of Moon Knight fans, uh, we, you know, the Warren Ellis, Declan Shelby run. 2014 is very highly regarded. I'm sure you know this as well, but um, I'm sure a lot of learners will be very keen to be tuning in, listening in, uh, you know, with your thoughts on Moon Knight. But uh, it's so good to have you on. Uh, what we're going to do, Loonies, is um, I like it. I mean, just 
personal indulgence myself, I'd like to chat with De- Declan about about your your writing and your drawing and how it all started. Uh, but also, I guess your thoughts on Moon Knight now, um, and also your th- that run with with Warren Ellis, how that came about because um, it, it was you know quite a magical run, I, I think. Um, so uh, things kind of came together really well for it. Um, so yeah. So uh, before any of that, though, uh, Declan, like, we know that you do um, you do a lot of writing as well. Um, uh, m- most recently, uh, you know, there's the the image side of of uh, Savage Town. Uh, it goes all the way back to also Civil War Two, choosing sides, uh, but drawing. Like, how did that kind of come? How did you find the the passion for for drawing? Um, and when did it kind of start? Uh, well, first, thanks for all the, the kind words. It's always uh, it's always really nice to hear. Um, uh, how did I start out? Well, um, I'm from Ireland, um, from the west of Ireland, which is kind of uh, m- more rural than, say, where I live now, which is Dublin. Um, but uh, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I was always in. I was. All, I just drew all the time when I was a kid. I was always mm-hmm. drawing. Um, uh, my uh, story I've told a few times. Um, uh, my my mother tells me when I was two, she walked into my room one time and I drew Humpty Dumpty on the wall, and um, she would have broken me into bloody pieces. Except <laughs> she said it was actually good. Um, so I was um, I just kind of kept at it, and I was always kind of drawing comics without realizing what comics were. Kind of as a kid, I'd be like watching cartoons and drawing those, and um, it's just something that's been in my DNA my whole life. Um, mm. Um, and, and 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 comics too, and uh, I you know, uh, it's not like a very obvious path for somebody from the west of Ireland to become a comic book artist. But um, I I just pushed myself as much as I could. I went to conventions and I I, I um I I did video samples and met other artists and writers and you know, eventually just kind of worked my way up to um getting a gig, uh, mm. which is a whole other a story. But um. Uh, yeah, I've just always, always drawn. So mm. thankfully, some I found a way to be paid to do it. <laughs> what was it like? I mean, you mentioned, um, you know, you had comics with you and and uh, potentially cartoons and all that as well. Was it like an allure for for superheroes? Like, I, I'm just kind of drawing from my own experience as well. Like thinking when I was like a, mm. a wee lad as well, and I don't know, just this this imagination of um, having superpowers. I know it's a really kind of hard thing to describe, but was that what you what kind of drew you to to superheroes or was it because of the drawing that drew you into the superheroes um i would say <clears throat> i was probably the morality of it all i mean i am um, it's weird like so people my generation in ireland or or in in the uk would have 2080 uh, would be mentioned a lot as a kind of a um uh influence but i i never did because i was way too square <laughs> um, I, I I didn't like like edgy cool you know and um, uh, nihilistic things. I was I was I just I think I just I liked the I think I liked the story the her the heroic story you know um, yeah. I liked the the do you know morality plays. I, I think I just really responded to those as a kid and um, you know wanted to be a good guy etc cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So I think there's that probably plays a big part of it. Plus so hugely visual you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even now like so with the stuff I'm writing. Um, which I, you know, is something I would enjoy to draw, but I know that if I was drawing something, I'd probably want to amp it up with a sci-fi element, just because mm-hmm. um, that's kind of where my stuff sings a little bit more. And um, okay, cool. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean it, it's interesting. I'm, I'm drawing something at the moment. It's really gory, and uh, I really like drawing like body horror and stuff. But like <laughs> that—that's not my origins. Like my origins yeah, were right. Spider-Man, X-Men, Batman, like the most straight-up superhero stuff there is. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that's always at the core of, of what I like. I, I still I still love the superhero stuff, and uh, that's always stayed with me. But um, but I think yeah, I think it's a mix of uh, of the morality play and the space to kind of you know you're not you're drawing buildings and flying figures and explosions and punching like it's just really entertaining. Uh, yeah. It's an entertaining medium to draw, which is is you know clearly part of why it became so popular. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting to me that you mentioned um, kind of like the sci-fi elements as well. I was going to ask you about the horror elements. Uh, I guess you've you've answered that as well. Like it's not really your your domain, but that would be 
I mean, that would have been pretty cool um, to, to kind of at least test yourself in and experiment in. I, I would have thought, again, coming from, like, I guess the Moon Knight background from um from mm -hmm. where where we know you uh the street level seems quite um quite uh, and of course like your other writings as well like, like savage town as well um the uh, street level stuff seems you seem quite at home with um yeah yeah definitely like i'm, yeah. I'm not a big like doctor strange fan mm. or um you know the cosmic stuff was never uh never really grabbed me it was like daredevil um, you know, Luke Cage, mm. uh, even like, you know, uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm blanking thinking, obviously, I'm, I'm Punisher, you know, all that stuff, all, all yeah. the street level stuff, definitely. And because I think, I think, I think, you know, Batman as well, um, mm. that kind of, it's real, but it's just out, it's just pushed past hyper reality, you know? Yes. And once you go, once you go further, into the huge, huge kind of like more expensive stuff. I, I, I mean, I think it's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's just not where my interests particularly lie. Mm. I think you could draw it, uh, yeah. and it does. You know, and it is something I think I, I, I have learned. While I really love street level stuff yeah. and and drawing real things, the opportunity to draw more fantastical stuff. Like if I got to do Doctor Strange, I'm sure I'd enjoy the hell out of it because yeah. it would leave lots of room to do visual things. But I think I do like starting from a very a grounded re, real place yep. and stepping up from there and, and moon knight was a great opportunity to do that okay well i'm going to throw out as well um the one of the more recent releases as well the the immortal hulk um which has um mm. come out recently as well how did you find that because that was uh i mean in some senses it is kind of grounded but you you're dealing with the hulk <laughs> right so um yeah 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 how did you well, find I mean, that yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I loved, I loved, I loved doing that. That was a great opportunity to, um, to write and draw and color, like just do everything uh, mm -hmm. on a like, a, just a, you know, just telling a story you've done in one story is really satisfying. Yep. You know, especially when you're drawing it because you know you don't have to spend a year uh, drawing it. <laughs> it was like a, a couple of months of work. Um, but kind of same with that. Like, I mean, that starts out very grounded. Like he's at a job. But like, yep. I got, I feel. In order to make the spectacular spectacular, you need to ground things to a degree, you know. Yeah. If you start in at a, at a spectacular level, I mean, you can do that and there's nothing wrong with that. But I personally, I think I like to pace things like that. So mm -hmm. there's a double page spread where, the, where Bruce turns into the Hulk. And um, like I think that that's satisfying when you're waiting for 10 pages, Yeah, you know. For him to turn into the Hulk, when he turns into the Hulk, he really turns into the Hulk. Um, <laughs> it's a matter of kind of uh, pacing things visually and and um, and in the story, um, and it's great to play with that. You know, um, yeah. no, I, I loved I loved working with that. It was it was it's, it's nice to do a singular take on something. To, to be fair, Immortal Hulk already existed, so yeah. you know, I was running with what they'd already done. But what they'd already done, especially. I mean, I'm loving the run still at the moment, but like that, that, that run's gone from like street level to crazy. Yeah. Now. Um, yeah. But I quite, I quite liked where it started. That, that, yep. that's more where I would like, and that's where the editors were looking for a story to be set. So it yep. just kind of, it, it really played to my, 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 um, my interests. Okay. And I guess like also being a one shot as well, you're less beholden to having to really tie into, any continuity, right? Um, issues with the ongoing yeah, well, I mean, series. So. Yeah, I think I think the point of those one shots, which I love personally, mm. is if you haven't been reading it, here is a basic primer mm -hmm. for you to kind of, you know, it, it's 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 not tying into all the storylines. It just exists in that world. And for me, like I actually hadn't read the book until not too long before I got I, I, I got that offer because um, I've been meaning to. Everyone mm. says it's great. I, like, I know Al's <laughs> an excellent writer. I know um, yeah. Joe's a great artist, you know, because I've seen pages. I'm like, I've just been meaning to read it. I just haven't gotten yeah. around to it. And then all of a sudden, there's like four trades. You're like, son of a... Yeah. Um, and, that can be, and then that can be intimidating because you're like, oh, man, there's so much of it to read. Yeah. So little things like that. Um, so for, as, as a reader, actually, I remember around that time, uh, the Jeff Lemire... Um, and Mike Del Mundo issue came out. Mm. There was a previous one shot of mine. And that was great because you just, you know, you get a feel for what the world is. It's one issue um, and, it's a, and, it's a, and it's a story that satisfies. You don't, you don't have to commit yeah. anything more than that. And nothing, I mean, that, that really encouraged me to want to actually go read the series because yep. I think they're great to, you know, it's not a huge commitment. 
it's one read and then if you like it there's way more of it so th- that that was the basic remit of the issue you know um, yeah it wasn't set at the current where the book is at the moment it's set in the first year or so of it where it's a bit more of an accessible um uh character drama before it kind of really to be like it's it's not that it, it isn't that as the book as the book develops but like it really digs into the mythology of hulk in, in a in a really interesting way but you don't jump in there no <laughs> you know no. And it's not you, a, re- a reader isn't going to want to pick something up at issue 40 whatever yeah no, um absolutely so that was my job that was my job and it was a great place for me to to hop in and hop back out again yeah nice um i, I want to kind of jump into this question anyway um Having said that, are you are you a fan of, of the Hulk? Like, I mean, you mentioned Spider Man, Batman. Um, you uh, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would have said no before, but then when I was kind of working on this, I'm like, yeah, I, like I I I I'm old enough to remember the the 70s, the Bill Bixby uh, Hulk series, yeah, yeah, because we used to get things so late in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, I thought when I was watching the 70s Hulk as a kid in the 80s, I thought that was like brand new. Uh, <laughs> Same with the Adam Same here, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't <laughs> yeah. know, like, because because culturally you're disassociated somewhat, you know, and um, yeah, and you know, back, you know, kids, they would understand that, like, when you're delivered something, you don't really see it with a timestamp. Uh, when it comes over from yeah. America, it yeah. just seemed new. Um, but no, it really tapped into like when I watched that show as a kid, and I, I, and I realized like I've watched, I love I love the Ang Lee Hulk film. Um, I okay. like, yeah, I think. Um, just the whole anger issues element of it, uh, I think I really related to when I was a teen. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe even now, you know, um, I think somebody was asking me that, like, uh, anger is in a lot of the stuff I write about. And I was like, huh, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize I had those issues. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so I think it's a character yeah. I kind of hadn't paid much attention to in a while, you know. I think I yeah. read some Peter Davis stuff when I was younger, and yeah. I had just kind of not been looking. Okay. Um, so the Immortal Hulk run is a great way for me to kind of get back into that character in yeah. in a kind of a way that's way more to my interests now, you know, as yeah. a as a you know horror kind of sci-fi idea, you yeah. know, rather than a superhero idea. I don't think I'm interested in the Hulk as a superhero. Okay, okay, but uh, as a monster, I, I you know. Well, so. I mean, Al Ewing has certainly kind of, I mean, turned it on its head, so to speak, because the Immortal Hulk has has kind of really added a lot more interest in the Hulk than him just being. I don't know. That's the Savage Hulk, like you as well, Peter David. I I read that. I love that. We're we're kind of around the same vintage, Declan. If I, if I can say that, so um, uh, that's kind of I was I was kind of wondering because the Hulk was a big thing back in the in the eighties. You know, Hulk and yeah. Spider Man were the big thing, um, and Peter David's uh, run I absolutely love. So we're talking about he's he's changed the game for the Hulk as well. You know, Professor Hulk, mm-hmm. Joe Fix it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, what he did with the character is, is amazing. And to be fair to, to, to Al, like, it's not so much like he, he did kind of put a new spin on it, mm-hmm. but like he actually went, and I mean, it ties into Moon Knight too, um, went back to the core. I mean, the, the title of the first arc is a, um, Is He Both, which is on the cover of issue one of the Hulk. Mm-hmm. You know, is he man? Is he monster? Is he both? Like, yeah, that's that is the, that is the character. So if anything, like, um, he really, he really dug into the kind of, you know, the the original vein, yes. you know, and just kind of found a new, a new thread. Yep, uh, it's, it's so funny. It, more and more, I kind of read uh, the Hulk. Um, I, I can see common threads between the Hulk and and Moon Knight as well, with this whole kind of, you know, um, different personalities and stuff. So, I mean, I, I've loved the Hulk ever mm. since. Um, I was I was young as well, um, but yeah, no, it's good to good to see. It's great to see you on there as well with with, with that one shot. Um, want to kind of track it back a bit um, because mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you know your origins in drawing. Um, what has kind of stuck with me? I think it was one of your tweets. I, I really can't remember. I, I follow you on, on Twitter, and I think there was a photo or something that you sent. This was ages a while ago, and it, I think it was you mm-hmm. putting. Um, um, uh, something in the mailbox to Marvel, and you're going, "Oh yeah, I can't believe it's you know," and I don't know just the way that you tweeted it. It was like, um, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a fan myself. I can't believe I get this gig, you know, with Marvel. Um, so yeah, I think I said uh, yeah. it was like, um, you know, uh, I think it was like. Uh, it's been ten years since this photo. Uh, yeah. You know, look at that kid. No idea what's ahead of him. <laughs> yeah. I think is what I said, and it was true. Like I am, um, I you know I wanted to work for Marvel my whole as long as I can remember, and um, 
like that was the moment where I sent the contract off. Yeah, you I mean, know, to to draw my first issues, which which you know, I'm I'm a I, I can I can be sentimental. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, no, but, for uh, sure. yeah. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, like that was it. I was going to actually ask you then, what was it like to to kickstart, you know, working for for Marvel? I've got here, uh, so, you know, your first days in Marvel, September two thousand ten. Uh, I've got like um, the Thunderbolts, Fear itself, Dark Avengers, uh, Venom, Winter Soldier, Deadpool. So some pretty cool, and dare I say again, a lot of kind of street levely sort of stuff. Um, Sure. Yeah, but how did how did you find it? Like the first days working with Marvel, what were what were the what were the staff like? I'm oh, assuming it's Jake uh, Thomas and yeah. Uh, no, at the no. time. So I mean, I mean, you don't you don't work at Marvel in a building, you mm-hmm. know. Um, you're. I mean, look, I'm in Ireland and I work for yeah, Marvel. Yeah, for sure. and, uh, Same you know, all over the world. I had the benefit of um, at the time I'd gone to New York to kind of well, basically get my name out there and try to talk to some editors and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so my when I got the gig, um, which was Jeff Parker, I sent my work to um, Bill Roseman, who was the editor of Thunderbolts at the time. And um, so I was in New York, so you know, I was like, "Fuck, second, I'll see if I can, <laughs> you know, chat, get get to talk my way in." Um, so yeah, I met I met Bill, and um, I had lunch with him, and he and he took me into the offices where they were at the time. I mean, it was amazing, you know. Just seeing the actual yeah. offices and everybody who was working there and stuff. Awesome. But um, but you know, I, I mean, I didn't really know any. I knew I had known a couple from a time in New York. I'd, know, I'd met a couple of editors, um, and they were like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" Because they knew me as this guy who was just like, <laughs> you know, this Irish fella. Yeah. Um, and I was like, "Oh, I work here now." They're like, "Oh, yeah, whatever." Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, no, it was it was uh, it was amazing. Like I pretty much was just dealing with Bill and. Um, mm-hmm his assistant at the time and you know then i did two issues it was a two issue and then i was like i hope i get more and i did get more i kind of got a a single issue i did a man thing issue for thunderbolts and at the time marvel had started double shipping so they needed they needed more talent like fast Mm -hmm. so and i happened to have just kind of gotten my foot in the door at the time so i was basically made like the b artist on thunderbolts um whereas kev walker was the the main guy Mm -hmm. um and then from there, I was, you know, you know, as the years go by, I was moved on to Venom um, and uh, Deadpool. But in a lot of ways, like as those were really cool books, and they were street levelly too, which was like to me, Venom was a dark Spider-Man, which was cool to draw. Yeah. Um, Deadpool was like a you know a, a mercenary X-Men thing type type thing. So it was like I got to kind of. Sc- I got to, as a fan who liked X-Men and Spider-Man and whatever else, I got to do things on the fringes of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, things which I think is I think is 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 good is a good place for me. Like I I never saw myself as the guy who's going to be doing Avengers or anything. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, but then uh, sorry, my cat's driving me mental. Um, <laughs> uh, if you hear if you hear a little kind of little delicate whines in the background, it's because she can't decide if she wants to be inside or outside. Uh, look, um, uh, don't worry. Look, I'm sitting in an office and I can just smell cat shit. I don't know where it's from. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it 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 uh, it it, uh, it inflames the nostrils for sure. <laughs> and, but uh, what was yeah. I saying? Um, but th- when Moon Knight happened, that changed. I mean, I, I, mm-hmm. my career w- was on a certain path, and Moon Knight just changed everything. Before yeah. that, I was effectively coming onto books that already existed and like taking over for, you know, do, doing doing runs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I really enjoyed doing that. But um, I was definitely getting to the point where I wanted to really sink my teeth into something a bit, a bit more ambitious, be it creator owned or whatever. So I just, I, just, I, I think I was, I felt like I, I needed to kind of really dig into something else. And, and I think Moon, I just came at the right time for me. Yeah. So, so that collaboration, I guess, um, and I guess that, that genesis of, of that title of 2014, working with Warren Ellis, um, was, had working with Warren Ellis allowed you to, um, I, I don't know, like what was the al- amount of input as a, as a drawer and a writer, do you get into the stories and, and co-plotting and stuff? Did you get more of that in uh, Moon Knight? Or? No. I mean, okay. like, um, I mean, I had only, I, I hadn't really properly started writing at the time. I was, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I up till that point, I had been basically just trying to do everything I could to make Marvel happy so they would keep mm-hmm. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> issues to draw. Um, what happened was, well, what, one, I was asked if I wanted to do Moon Knight and I really wanted to do a brand new issue one. There was a lot of cool new books happening at the time. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, I wanted to make a book that like had its own feel uh, and you know a new a new series would have been a great opportunity to do that so that's why I wanted to do Moon Knight and I base I mean I'll, I'll be straight up like I wasn't a Moon Knight fan mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd read I'd read some Moon Knight and I really liked I really liked what I'd read mainly because there were some amazing artists like yes that was the cool thing about that book is like it wasn't the biggest title in the world it wasn't the most like hugely um uh, respected or anything but mm. the amount of our amazing art talent that have been on that book is crazy but like yeah. Sienkiewicz and Tommy Edwards and uh you know uh, Maliev and you know you name it David Finch um, yeah 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 I do yeah um so like I was like yeah I'm on board <laughs> and then then I was told that there was a a little known British writer was how it was put to me <laughs> um was going to be working on it. and I was trying to think of like is it Kieran Gillen is it Sy Spurrier yeah. because I know I know those guys and they're British and they were at Marvel, uh, yeah. um, working at Marvel. And, was, and when I heard it was Warren Ellis, I, I, I nearly lost my mind because, I mean, I grew up reading. I was a kid when I read his Excalibur run. You know, mm-hmm. Next Wave was huge for yeah. me. Planetary yeah. is like, Planetary is like, like one of my absolute favorite comics. Mm-hmm. Um, and he hadn't been doing comics in a long time. He'd kind of been out of the comics game. Um, so I just, I was like, oh, like I couldn't believe it. Um <laughs> So I kind of started out creatively in a place of shock, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and yeah. just like, I hope whatever I do, Warren doesn't hate. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, I didn't have the um, swagger that Warren has, you know, mm. I was still, st- I was a guy who came on your book as a third artist. That's yeah. kind of how I, 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 not how I saw myself, but how I evaluated my career. Yeah. This was different. And it was very scary, um, but what helped was, one, I didn't give a shit about Moon Knight. Um, <laughs> in in, in, yeah. in that I didn't have, like, yeah, for when sure. I worked on Batman, when I worked on Batman, I freaked yeah. out. Um, yeah. Because everything, all the pressure of every mm-hmm. single thing that I that grew up reading, was I put on myself. Yeah. Moon Knight, because I had no, like... Um, I had no emotional or, or childhood connection. It was just a bit of a blank slate where yeah. I could take the concept and whatever Warren was coming up with and, and work with it. So that that was actually very free. It was freeing in that way. Yes. Um, and the stuff that Warren was, I mean, it was all Warren, all the cool stuff. I wish I could take credit for it, but like Warren had all the cool stuff. Okay. Uh, it was just my job to kind of make it work. Yeah. Can, can I ask that again? This is from um, me being naive and just how it works between writers and, uh, and and drawers as well, artists. So, from what I understand, right, the, the com- and I guess there are different degrees that art- that writers will have it. Um, you write a script, right? But do they write like they write the the number of panels, and do they write what goes in each panel, or or is there left yeah. interpretation for you, like? Well, to do- well, it it depends on how you like to work. I actually right. like a proper full script, okay, um, because there's a certain amount of logistical thinking. Um, of what would make it work in a page that should be figured out before the artist draws it. Like mm-hmm. if I'm drawing a scene and I'm like, there isn't enough room for this to work. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't jump through the building, beat up eight people <laughs> and have him write a letter, send it to the letter and have him wait for two days. Like, you know, like there's, 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 yeah. there's pacing thing okay. that'll, that'll work. Um, some writers aren't very good at that. Some writers are very good at that, but at like the very least, you know, I would like them to like take the time to actually figure out if it's going to work, yeah. rather than me have to figure out if it's going to work and then make it work. Okay. I think my job is to make it work, but yeah. I shouldn't have to um, make it work in spite of it not being workable. Yes, no, I totally understand. Yeah, and and you know, and 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 I'm the same as a writer. Like I, I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to write anything that I don't think is going to fit on a page, and I would have a natural sense of like what will be enough or too much or mm-hmm. or what have you um there are you know you don't direct things like um i mean maybe you might have a like like you might write establishing shot or something yep. sometimes maybe view from over the shoulder or something like that but mm-hmm. you wouldn't be like um and i did happen to me one time i got a script where it said uh panel one top left hand side of page panel two top right hand side of page like literally telling you oh. where the panels go okay and, like uh, I was like, "Fuck that!" Uh, that was, <laughs> I was one of the few times where I, I yeah. like, I completely ignored what a script script said because because you know, you don't tell me how to do it. You yeah. know, that's not that's not what you do. You give a you give an artist the route. 
you tell, give them all the information that they need, yeah. and then you let them do their thing. Yeah. And I mean, I and I didn't know what Warren was going to be like. Um, mm-hmm. I think I thought, and I think a lot of people assumed that his scripts were going to be really uh, overly labored and overly mm-hmm. descriptive. But um, if anything, they were very, very tight, mm-hmm. very like all the words meant something. Yeah. Or described something in the best way. Oh. Like he very economical yes but you know not dumbed down just it's like he just distilled things down into yeah everything i needed without giving me anything without being superfluous you yeah. know and um, and i think that actually that that actually worked really in your favor and and it could have actually been a big risk as well because what ended up happening was that your art was in the forefront you, you know because a lot of these issues one to six were very cinematic they relied heavily on images to show what was happening i mean of course it was all scripted yeah. and stuff but exactly wasn't no, exactly. You're right yeah there's a lot of silent panels there's mm-hmm. a lot of like like, like stuff like that was what was kind of surprising was he like one he was trying to murder me every month because there was something <laughs> just so goddamn bonkers crazy that i that nearly killed me to, uh, to get it all done yeah. in time but um <laughs> but it was um it showed a lot of trust in what I could do. Considering, I mean, I'd met him one time very briefly as a fan. I, I was trying mm-hmm. to get him to sign. I actually, I just started working on Thunderbolts. <laughs> okay. And I was getting to sign my planetary, I think. And I was like, oh, I work on Thunderbolts. And he was like, oh, I never read a book after I've worked on it. Like, well, I didn't see, never seen my stuff. <laughs> you know? so that was it. So, but I, I had no idea. Like it turned out, it turned out that I found out afterwards that like he, he did, Partly did the book to work with me, which was amazing. Okay, I, wow! I, like nice. I said, he hadn't been in comics while when my career kind of started and developed. Mm-hmm. He wasn't in comics, so I didn't expect he would know me at all. Mm. Um, and then to end up to work on a book where he, you know, you need a good artist to make that work, and mm. you need an artist with at the risk of complimenting myself um, <laughs> with a little bit of. Um, I don't know, out, out, out left field vision to yeah. kind of do something not conventional. And, you know, I, I did, I was scared for a while. I'm like, oh, well, man, am I, am I going to, am I, am I going too far with this? Mm. But the notes I would get back from Warren is like more, you know, go mm. crazier, which was incredibly liberating wow. from, cool. a, you know, a work for hire point of view. Yeah. Like Mar- Marvel basically, I think, just let him do whatever he did, whatever he wanted yeah. in a way I'd never. And also, I was in the emails. So, like, yeah. Just see, just see him, just be able to do what he wants, and 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 like with no huge editorial push pushback was wow. kind of amazing to see. As a creator, it was kind of like, oh my, like, yeah. wow, they're not. Um, but it, but also, I remember I asked because you know I w- I wasn't a huge name. I, I asked if I could do the covers, mm-hmm. and I was told that'll be a conversation. We'll see. And Warren was like, Declan's doing the covers. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah. They're yeah. like, okay, you know, like he he used his his leverage to get to give me all the space that i could do to do my best work which again he didn't know me mm. you know that was huge like uh, and, and and scary and but also you know i remember thinking at one stage i'm like and if i can't go crazy in a warren ellis comic when will i you know and that yeah. was a good to kind of like trust my gut and push myself and if i had an, if i had a visual idea go yeah. with it you know and um, yeah. So, so, so like, I, well, I credit Warren for all all the ideas. Mm-hmm. I'll credit him more for giving me the room to kind of like make them work in a way that was through me, if that makes sense. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I guess added to that fact as well, um, though those six issues were um, they were all kind of like one shots. There was a, like a thread kind of going through them. But um, again, maybe it might have been just as liberating to know that you weren't as tied to. Um, having to, I don't know. Actually, having said that, um, 2014, I think the the previous one was the Bendis run, I think, or um, or the Vengeance. yeah Bendis. I yeah, think it had been a few years. I think yeah. the Bendis one so, maybe. I mean, I'm just pulling this out of my arse, but I, I think it was maybe 2000, 2011, maybe or 2009. yeah, 2011. To, yeah, 2011. Yeah, sounds so about right. There hadn't been a Moon Knight series in a while, so yeah. again, that was also a little less intimidating. Because yeah, exactly. One, and so there was an appetite from the fans. Yeah. And I mean, what I was worried is like we're giving them something very different, mm. and oh. I think that more hardcore fans tell you they want something different, yeah. um, but they don't like it when they see it yes. until they read it, and then they'll come around. 
Yeah. Um, and if you give them the same thing every time, which is what they say they want, they don't like it yeah. when they read it. Well, because but, then it, it makes sense because then they kind of compare it to the other like uh, similar stuff before. So then it becomes yeah. a bit more of a critical. Th- yeah, absolutely. Um, just the cool thing with this with this run was like it was yeah. like nothing before. So it, it mm. was just so its own thing, which yeah. was again me coming on it, uh, not having like all the weight of the character on my back, mm. uh, just just leaning into. Well, also because also Warren told me he said he told me he read the, the first issues of Moon Knight. Yep. And that's what he read. That's it. He's not uh, okay. like he. Same, same with um. We're talking about Hulk. Is yep. like he just tapped into the very core, mm-hmm. and then which I think is I think is great advice for anybody who's taking over something because, yep. you know, um, do you want to be really dragged down by what happened in a in issue eighty whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, um, when I, again, this, this should be for new. What I was what I was hoping was that like like me. I would have read the crap out of that book had I not drawn it. Yeah. If it was Warren Ellis and like an, an artist I liked, yep, that would have been totally on board. You want new readers, you know? Yep. Um, no, absolutely. And, I think, and and so so what I really responded to is the new readers of Moon Knight, um, and I always felt a little bit bad with like like readers of Moon Knight for years because I'm like they know stuff about it that I don't like. Well, I can ask <laughs> what's my favorite. <laughs> And I just go like mine, <laughs> um, because because yeah. from from a, from a from a somebody who didn't know the character, yeah, it was great. Like even issue one, if you missed issue one, it didn't matter. Issue yeah. that was the thing, that was a cool thing about that book was I feel like issue two could have been issue one, issue yeah. three could have been issue one, issue For four sure. could have been issue one. But, um, and you don't know anything about the character. Yeah, it's it's not. No, exactly. It de- sorry, I'm sorry. I don't sorry. mean to talk over. You. Oh, oh no! I was just about to say the the beauty of it as well. Like you're saying, it's very it's good for the new readers, but it also um, really does, uh, I guess, revere that the the material, the the source material, as you're saying that Warren Ellis read the first bits because in in those issues, all six of them, there are nice references to the older run, just oh so subtle, you know. And uh, for fans, I think they really picked up on that. They really appreciated that, but. Um, but you, I mean, this run, this 2014 run as well, is has easily slotted in to the overall canon of Moon Knight um, as, as one of the classics. You know, people again and again, exactly as you're saying, um, people ask, oh, what, what should I read to start? You know, I don't know anything about Moon Knight. People always go, seriously, either um, the 2014 run, uh, Warren Ellis, everyone kind of says, you know, six issues. It will get you kind of really going. You'll see Mister Knight, mm-hmm. or um, or actually, yeah, the um, the Charlie Houston two thousand and six run, which um, mm-hmm. kind of really brought that darker edge. But yeah, I mean, you've um, it's so funny, uh, kind of hearing you say, um, you know, all these great artists before you, Moon Knight and stuff. But you're you're kind of in it now, like you know, and you've got one of the most memorable runs. Uh, seriously, without yeah, sounding too pandering towards you, but it, it's really cool. Like, <laughs> no, please, please, please pander away. Um, uh, no, I mean, look, it's like you always, you know, no one is really going to remember my Venom run outside of like the the readers of the book at the time. Um, my Deadpool arc, I think, has gone has 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 a bit of longevity. Mm-hmm. Um, Thunderbolts is is a book again for people who read the book will remember, and I'll always really really love that. But you're always trying to, you know, as a creator, you want to do something that kind of leaves a mark. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel really grateful that I got a chance to do. I feel I feel like I did that with Moon Knight. Like we, I got to do something that hadn't been done like that before, um, in that way, and experiment as an artist, like. It felt like a creator-owned book, mm. you know, um, which That's was right. amazing. And I think, as a, I think because of that, it's hard thing to it's hard thing to kind of quantify. But like, you know, when I look over the pages, like I, just, I feel I feel that energy in them. Mm. Um, it, it's 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 a hard thing to kind of like. You can't you can't quantify you can't put that in a bottle necessarily. You know, you can't yeah. explain it. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. I just felt like there was a weird there was weird, there was a, there was a kind of a. An anticipation and an excitement um, um, uh, going on at the time, and for me personally, and it all just I, I, it, like I'm so proud of those of those um, those six issues. Um, I, I kind of I wish we'd kind of done more, just um, because I would have loved to have like a lovely hardcover, uh, <laughs> yeah. just because I'm a pretentious artist. But um, <laughs> but I mean, 
from the beginning, like Warren just said, six issues is, is it. That's all. He, that's all he was going to do. Mm-hmm. I think Marvel thought they were going to try. To, they were going to talk him into doing more, but he was like, done. Mm. Um, so I, I mean, and I knew that going in. Um, uh, I mean, they they told me there might there you know there be more, but like yeah. there wasn't. Um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I had I had I had the option to stay on when Brian Wood took over. Yes. Uh, and I, and I, I, I'm a big fan of Brian's writing. I've worked with Brian before. He's a fantastic writer. But um, I made the choice to step off with Warren mm-hmm. because I think I wanted it to be mine and Warren's run. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I felt if I stayed on, it would be Warren's run. Yeah, you know, right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you know, for uh, sure. Uh, I think that happens with, with, with runs over time is if you if you switch things if you if you switch the the combination, then it gets loaded one way, and writers tend yeah. to get more credit than than artists, in my experience. So I I I was happy to kind of step off it because then at least it was Warren and Declan, that's what they did rather yes. than remember those. Fr- also, I was worried. What if the <laughs> what if it's not as good? You know, how do you follow <laughs> Warren Ellis? And I didn't want to be like in the book that didn't do as good as yeah. Warren. Not 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 that it didn't or shouldn't actually. I I I think um. Um, people who if, uh, people who kind of remember the Brian Wood issues, but Brian Wood and Greg Smallwood did the next arc. Yes, that was great. They were really good. good. They were very good. And and Colin Bunn yeah, after that as well. Um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. With that, yeah, it was, I, was, I, was the, I was doing the cover still. So I, um, mm. but also my my girlfriend at the time was coloring it. So I got to see Greg Smallwood pages come in. I was like, oh man, why did he have to be so good? <laughs> I was hoping somebody crap would take over after me. <laughs> that's, then that's, I'd look yeah, amazing. But Greg Small was an incredible artist. Yeah. And that really stung. I was well, not happy about it at all. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly as you kind of say as well. I mean, because the the run, I mean, if you, if say, like you bundle that 2014 run with the Brian Wood and the Colin Bunn run, you've got the Jeff Lemire and Greg Smallwood run. And those two really defined themselves in that next run, you know, I think it was, yeah, was it 2017 or something. Um, but yeah, it's, um, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Funny though. Oh yeah. I'm just as petty as anybody else, man. <laughs> <You know? Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, we did see a little bit of Moon Knight as well, uh, resurface with something that you did for civil war two. Um, now look, let's not get too much into the whole civil war two arc in general um whether you mm-hmm. liked it or not we'll leave that to everyone's discretion um but yeah choosing sides i i loved as well because we did get to see the return of a moon knight um in it as well yeah that was that was that was my very clear pandering to moon knight fan <laughs> um, yeah, yeah because i left left moon knight and i went to go do um injection with warren over at image yeah um, because I loved working with Warren and and I wanted to do more of it. He, he asked, I was like, oh well, yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> I got I got the opportunity to write and draw this Nick Fury serial, which was part of um, yeah. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Choosing Sides was a an anthology series that was running alongside the main event. Um, so different artists, different writers doing many short stories. But what was offered to me was a really kind of a different thing, which was um. One, I got to write and draw, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a serial, so it was a, it was a short story for every issue of the miniseries that would be a an overall longer story. Mm-hmm. So it's which which was creatively really interesting experiment, and um, and and yeah, I, I, it was cool to work on. So it was Nick Fury, and I want so I wanted to do it basically, whereas it's a longer story. He has to go on missions, and each mission is a short story, and mm-hmm. one of them. And yeah, since I after I'd wrapped on Moon Knight, I, had, I mean, I had been asked a lot, "When are you coming back to Moon Knight? When yes. are you coming back to Moon Knight?" <laughs> yeah. And I mean, <laughs> friend of my, my answer was never, yeah. because how do I follow that? Mm, yes. You know, sure. how do I follow what that that would warrant? And and I also like, I don't know if ever coming back to do a second run has that ever been as good? Mm. You know, yeah. I don't know. Um. That that would be very intimidating. Like, uh, how mm-hmm. am I going to, like, even like I would maybe do to write and draw. I would put it out. I'd put that yeah, out there. okay. Oh, I think it would. You know, I would I would consider it. But then, I mean, but as a as a creator, like, how the hell do I follow Warren Ellis? You know, <laughs> um, because Warren gave me an engine to do really interesting stuff, and he pushed me. And and you know, you that's what I I, I do like. I like it when I'm creatively pushed by a writer, yeah. um, because uh, it leads to 
you gotta level up each time, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially with that, one, especially with that one shot format was so was so great because you, you know, sorry if I'm getting into the weeds a little bit, but like no, no. when I do an arc of a book, I want to level up on the next arc mm-hmm. of a different book. With Moon Knight, I had to level up every issue because it was something so different. You know, yeah. it's not like there was a bit of issue two that related to issue three. It was a whole different story with a whole different costume mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, the um, bone armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, you know, so every time I'm like, oh, cool, I can draw this. Oh, crap, how am I going to do this? That was always my <laughs> reaction. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but, 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 so my answer in my mind was never. But mm-hmm. a friend of mine, another artist, said, like, don't say that. Like, don't, if fans want more, then, like, yeah. don't tell them, don't tell them that it's not going to happen because it's cruel. Yeah. Um, but my, but I wasn't. I wasn't planning on it. I, I didn't. I don't see how it was going to happen. But my my, um, I think my 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 runner up prize was. You know what? I'm I'm going to write. I'm going to draw Moon Knight in this story. Yeah. As a kind of a, uh, I wouldn't say thank you, but as a nod to everybody who's so into to to Moon Knight. Like also, it was fun to draw. Just, I mean, it was only a few yeah. pages. Yeah. But yeah. um, like, it was a treat to do it. Um, it was a uh, but um. Yeah, that was that, that was that was basically my you know yeah. uh, acknowledgement to the hardcore Moon Knight fans. You know, yeah. I was like, I was like, I know you want more. Yeah. I can't give you more, but here's a here's a little you know, <laughs> well, a little taste. I reckon Dead Set. I mean, and just my own personal opinion, that was probably the best issue out of Civil War Two. <laughs> Civil War Two, <II, laughs> um, out of all the issues there. So, I um, no, highly appreciated, and to see Moon Knight again drawn by you um, and written um, fantastic as well. I'm um, just wondering because of I mean, you mentioned that, and that was kind of like a nod to the fans. Has Moon Knight kind of rubbed off on you in any way as well? Like, are you more interested in the character? I notice again. I'm going to pull out a a tweet comment that you made. I think you were um, you when the Marvel Legends uh, Moon Knight issue uh, toy figure came out. I think you commented, "Oh, cool! They've, they've got my uh, my artwork on the on the box." You know, so um, has Moon Knight been? Uh, do you see Moonlight any different now? Are you a bit more interested uh, no, in the character? No, for, yeah. no, for for sure. Like, yeah. I mean, I've I read. I mean, I read. I mean, I was reading the Brian Wood stuff. I loved that. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of stayed on the character. I fell off the Jeff Lemire run just because I remember I was just really busy at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to go back and, and read it because one, I love Jeff Lemire, Greg Smallwood, amazing. Um, and I'm so jealous that they have their they have a hardcover because they did. <laughs> well, you, you should have a hardcover. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, look, look. My my argument is right. Yeah. There's a new show coming out. Yes. Why not? Absolutely. I know. I did. I did a. Mar- I did a Marvel <laughs> art book. Um, yes, you did. Yep. Last year, Marvel did a Marvel art, and I dug up. I used it as an excuse to dig up a lot of the Moon Knight prep stuff I had done because oh, yeah. when the trade was coming out, it was just the covers. That was it. There mm-hmm. was no, you know. And I did so much development work on that ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I wanted to show it off, so I used it as an excuse to get some like Moon Knight back matter <laughs> published. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, and um, so what I what I think Marvel should do is put out the the my run with Warren six issues hardcover and add in the stuff that I did on the on the um, on the art book. Yes. So they're not paying for any more material, right? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't cost them anything. Yes. They get to repackage something for the show coming out. Price it at something where like hardcore Moon Knight fans are totally going to buy. I'll buy it. Like <laughs> you know, because like yeah. it's 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 it's. I'm totally going off on one here, like, but you know, it's it's considered one of the really good runs, and it's just yeah. it's just it's Absolutely. just a trade. Exactly. Like it's the only way you can get it, if you can actually, I think it may, it may not even be in print anymore. I don't know. Yeah, um, it's a bit hard. I think people just get floppies um, still, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but but like yeah, so that's what that's what I would do. Um, yeah. But sure. You know, Absolutely. These things are. These things are not um, uh, uh, of my pay grade. Oh, we'll, um, we'll make noise. Um, we'll, we'll demand. We'll demand one as fans. Well, look, that's it. If they, if they thought people would buy them, then they would do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. For sure. Um, and hey, as you but, say, uh, the TV hey, show. I would even do. I would even do. Uh, I would even do a new like story or short story for it or something. Like, oh, really? Um, <laughs> there you go. No, yeah, why not? I'd do Sorry. it. Like, yeah, I'd do oh that. God. Okay, I've got a got a shoot out some posts then saying Declan yeah. says Declan says he'll write one he'll write and draw one <laughs> just get that no, deluxe totally. hardcover yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it, it, like because uh, look with this stuff there's stuff you'd love to see but like when you're in the industry you realise like there's just a nuts and bolts reasons things do or do not happen but yeah. like um, I think if there was a 
cheap way for Marvel to put out a new book. Look, actually, look to be honest, maybe they, maybe they're doing it. I have no idea. Like, I would love we're not all this stuff. Sometimes you find out. I'm like, oh, they're reprinting my Deadpool run because I see it in the catalog, and I, you know, yeah. you're not told this stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and my other dream was if if, to, if IDW did like an artist edition of all the pages. Like those, these are all the these are all the things as an artist you'd love happen. Um, That's awesome. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but remember, I met, I met an editor who was in charge of all that stuff, and he had no idea who I was. So I'm like, okay, the book's not happening. I <laughs> know. Um, uh, but sorry, I'm not sure I answered. I'm not sure I answered your question. Sorry. Oh no, I, I think we're just talking about. Um, I can't even remember as well. I think we're just talking about the um, the uh, your liking of Moon Knight. If it, it has grown, has indeed grown. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, sorry. As regards your your your, your question, I mean, some of it's just like you know narcissism. Um, seeing my art used on things is cool, but it's also sometimes a bit of a complaint because, like, you know, you don't get anything from that. Like, like, oh. you know, I'm not going to get anything from that Moon Knight show, whether whether yeah. they, they do or, or use it. And and I'm not. This isn't me, like, with a campaign or anything. I knew what I was signing up for yeah, when sure, I sort sure. of Marvel. It's their character, you know. Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I I get that. So it's always a little bittersweet when you see something that like you made and. You don't get anything for it, yeah. you know. But I don't know. For me, Moon Knight is kind of because it was such a, it was a cult. I think it was a cult hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It, was, it wasn't Spider Man. It wasn't X Men. It wasn't um, Batman. Batman or anything, you know. Yeah. It was it. There is something cool about having done something more original on a character that never really had that kind of spotlight before you know and mm. i i hope it's the reason why the show's happening you know i um, yeah you know it's no but it was it's cool to do something that like not everybody knows i guess maybe that'll change now that with the show but it, yeah. it's cool to do something that not everybody knows but like everybody like i i still to this day get comp- get 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 really nice comments on uh on that run especially from artists actually i yeah. i it's been i mean well, like you said it's 2014 that's like seven years ago now mm-hmm. Holy hell. Um, <laughs> and there's artists who like I new artists who I really like and they're like oh man your new Moon Knight run was everything I'm like wow yeah. I, I, yeah. that's huge that's, yeah. that's, that's amazing it's a me. bit of, it's a bit of a double edged sword though but do you find is that is that hindering as well like to be I mean I, I think it's great I think it's awesome that, that you are known you know for Moon Knight's run 2014 because it's such an important run but yeah double edged sword wise is that something that you kind of go oh hang on look I've I've done other stuff as well. Like, you know, I've done. Like, I've got your list here of D- DC stuff, your Dark Horse stuff, your Image stuff. Um, you know, all great, yeah. all good stuff. But yeah, oh, I agree. It is all great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 no. It's not. I mean, as a creator, like you certainly don't want to be mm. just remembered for the thing you did years ago. Mm. But I mean, I, like, I mean, I guess that's a that's a downside of success. Mm. I guess you know, if the book yeah. did so well. If that's what I, I mean, if that's what I'm remembered for till the end, it's, I mean, I'm it's fine with me. I I yeah. hope it's not the biggest thing I do. I mean, I I you know, especially when I'm doing more creator own stuff, yeah, and um, getting to work on on the things I'm working on now. I'm hoping you know, you, you, I don't want to I don't want to be living. We'll put it this way: I don't want to be living in the shadow of something I did seven years ago. Yeah, um, because I'm you know, one would hope I have bigger, better work uh, ahead of me. What I think was different with Moon Knight is because it was such a different take yeah it, it, it stands out and will be remembered longer but that's a good reason for it to be to, if it was some boring yeah. generic you know thing oh, that yeah. i wasn't ha- that i didn't enjoy working on that i didn't really care that much about mm-hmm. that would stay you yeah. know in some ways moon knight's the best thing i've ever done like, like, like i said there's that charge there's a charge in the work at the time which yeah i really i i, I i'm very um i i i, I remember and 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 it, it's it's it feels good to kind of remember, remember that yeah um but yeah like i i certainly hope there's bigger better things to come but i i'm i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna feel bad that people really loved that run because uh-huh. one the only people reading that book were moon knight fans warren ellis fans <laughs> or people who became people who really became diehard fans of mine so you don't even like the word fans for readers but like people who got into my work it 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 for a lot of, like you said, I did a lot of stuff with Marvel before Moon Knight. That's the first thing that a lot of people knew of because it hit in yeah. a certain way. Not necessarily sales-wise. Like, it did do very well, mm-hmm. uh, from what I can tell. But it just resonated. 
and yes. to do something that resonated like that is is amazing. I mean, that's it's that's amazing to to, to have done. I, yeah, I, very Absolutely. lucky. If, if I can just share with you um, quickly before we kind of wrap things up as well, uh, my memory of getting that 2014 run, there was a an LCS near me um, in the in the west of Sydney, uh, and it was a comic book store, but also a a bodybuilding <laughs> store. Uh, I've oh, never it's... I've never seen a comic book store mixed in with so between the protein powders and the uh, and yeah. the shakes, <laughs> um, I remember seeing issue one um, of of that of the Moon Knight issue. I was like, yep, I'm going to pick that up. I just remember the first one they bloody they bloody cut along the spine. I don't know. They use this um, a blade when they must have opened the box. So I thought, okay, now I'll get the oh. one behind it. I know. So I thought I'll get the one behind it. But that was my first uh, impression. And then being served by this big hulking. Freaking bodybuilder. <laughs> so, uh, Surprised it wasn't the Hulk that they were selling. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just had a curiosity. Were, were you already a Moon Knight fan before that book? Or? Yeah, I, I've, I've been a Moon Knight fan since the 90s. Mark Spector Moon Knight run. Um, uh, I kind of... We're, we're of the very similar vintage. I'm, I'm maybe a, a few more runs runs above you um uh, Declan but in, in the 90s yeah I was in a, a purple patch of you know being a teenager and stuff so um I kind of you know rode that wave if the whole comic book industry you know how the whole thing and yeah. and 90s mm -hmm. in general I, I lived the pouches sure, sure. I, 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 I just I had limited exposure to that I kind of was ah, only able right. to Spider-Man and X-Men that was that was ah, okay. I, I didn't live near a comic book shop or anything so um yeah, yeah. So th those were those were my hardcores um yep. I, yeah yeah I, I like I, I think I think my mom was able to get, bring me to Dublin once or twice a year, and I would get into a comic book shop and just get everything I could. But yep. I, I was able to kind of dig in deep on anything else. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, I I can't tell you to this day how I afforded it back then. I, you know, I was talking to a friend. He goes, "You were collecting that back then." He's going like, "How did you, you know, how did you afford it?" Like, I can't, I can't remember. I don't know. It must have well, sold, sold know, some hubcaps. It, it stopped me from <laughs> buying drugs. I guess. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's it. Um, before we kind of wrap up, uh, look, you've, you've given a little bit of thoughts as well um, on the, the TV show. Uh, will you be watching it? Like, I know you said th there's a whole kind of thing about it'd be probably pretty cool to see maybe bits of the Ellis and Shelby run drawn from it as well. But are, are you are you looking forward to it? Do you watch many comic book shows and movies and stuff? Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. I, I pick and choose. Um, I think, like, what... The thing I don't want to happen is, I don't. What I think is great is, for example, I wasn't really, I, I didn't give a toss about Guardians of the Galaxy till I saw the movie. You know, oh, yeah, I, I yeah, knew yeah. all the characters, but I never really got into it. And you know, so mm -hmm. I think I think the shows and the films are great to kind of like surge interest into the characters. So that's great. Um, uh, I I I watch stuff I think I'm gonna like. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and not to get too, um, you know. Comic, comics political or anything but like yeah. i'm not interested in the Zack snyder stuff okay yeah uh, i tried you know tr i tried i tried man of steel didn't like it mm -hmm. so i just don't watch the rest now i don't complain about it because i haven't seen it i'm not going to complain about something sure. I, I haven't seen yeah. um and but what i worry about sometimes is the amount of the amount you're watching comics material that's adapted and that ends up being all i watch while i'm making comics material and i kind of don't want that i want to I want to make sure I'm watching art that compels me to come up with or to, to, be, to be inspired to tell stories. And I worry sometimes there's like a feedback loop. We're watching too much comic book stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like, like, like so, but, but I do watch a lot of it, like uh, watch WandaVision and watching Winter Soldier now and watching mm -hmm. Invincible. Um, so like, um, you know, when Moon Knight comes on, I'm going to watch the shit out of it. <laughs> yes. um, well, I mean, but it's interesting. I like I I watched there was a Spider Man cartoon and there was a Christmas episode where Moon Knight showed up. Yes, yeah. I and I, I hadn't watched the cartoon, but I mean, I watched because that was my that was my costume design. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was so <laughs> so weird to see it move around like that, you know? Yeah. Um, because you know I have it in my sketchbook. That's that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it started. That's so crazy. It's so weird. Yeah. Same with the toys and everything. Like it's 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 so yep. cool to to see that. Like I, I you know yeah. The, the inner kid in you can't not love that. Yeah. Um, but uh, with the show, I mean, I'm hoping it'll be based on what we did to a, to a to a large degree because I think what we did is give readers a way in, mm -hmm. um, and I think the show could do the same. Yeah. Um, but we only did six issues, so like, yeah. you know, it's not like. You know, it's that's six seasons worth of material. Um, although maybe it is, who knows? 
fucking hell. <laughs> but again, that's testament to your run because uh, within like the fan base community as well, this whole speculation about the TV show, people going, oh, Disney Plus, they might have six episodes. Why not just like, you know, base it on the Warren Ellis? You know, you'd have six one shots. Uh, that would I be a cool savage. idea. Yeah. Which, to be fair, I mean, we're all, we're just, this is such nerd talk now, but like, <laughs> I would say that it never happened, except I saw One Division and I saw what they did, which mm. was pretty ballsy. Like to yep. do the whole TV show thing yeah. with each episode, like yeah, uh, that's that's not a that's not what you would consider a mainstream a mainstream move for a huge tentpole television series yeah. that's tied into movie. You know that that's that's yeah, it's way more, it's way weirder than you would expect. Yeah, um, like I'm watching the the with falcon winter soldier one now like and i mean that that's exactly kind of what i want is I, yeah i want i like the espionage world you can um, tell like you can, it. yeah you can tell that was an opener that would have been the first show that disney plus dropped um and yeah, wonder vision I mean, yeah yeah i mean it, it yeah it feels more like it's like moving on from the civil war movie you know mm, but, it, but it's the espionage mm. side of the marvel universe that i like like the nick fury thing is that i, I love yeah. that side of the marvel universe um so I'm enjoying that, but what One Division I, I thought was was surprisingly wacky, it was. and they made it work. So that's very encouraging for me, <laughs> nice, you know, rather yeah. than it just being, you know, what I hate hearing is like, is Marvel's Batman? He's yeah. nothing, nothing like oh, Batman. Man, I totally hear that. Yeah, <laughs> it's the most. It's just the most simplistic, boring. Second uh, description, <laughs> uh, and I would hate if they did that in the show. And also, I don't, yeah. I don't see why they would. You know, um, no. Also, I see the directors they're hiring. I haven't seen their films, but they're um, supposed to be really. Inter- they're supposed to be very interesting filmmakers. Oh yeah, the uh, the two the two chaps plus uh, Mohammed Dayeb, um, the Egyptian director yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, want, I, I want to check them out because I hear I hear that the, 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 their stuff's really good. But I yeah. mean, it's not like it's you know. TV writer from whatever, no. or you know, like they're, they're making interesting decisions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. And as, as a as a comics fan, I don't like what people like. I I like tread more on Ghost Rider. I like David mm-hmm. Ayer and Hawkeye. Like I like yeah. I like interesting creators doing interesting things with with characters. Uh, to be fair to Marvel, that seems to be what they're doing. And um, mm-hmm. so I'm very I'm very curious. Like I I saw footage. A couple of weeks ago of Oscar Isaac training. Yes, I was about to Did ask you, if you sent Yeah, it looks really yeah, good. Yeah, well, I, I don't I don't look for this stuff at all, but for, nah. sometimes I get sent it. And uh yeah. and so the only reason I think they might use our run is because the logo is the same as the logo myself and Jordy designed that logo for the book. Ah um, yeah, okay. So the, you know that that move with the, the, yes. with the crescent moon in the second like that's that yep. we we did that. And that's what they're using for the show. Yeah, so that so makes cool. me feel because if you look, if you look at all the other Moon Knight arcs, like the David Finch one and oh, yeah. uh, all the other ones, they all have specific logos. Yes, yes. They're using our logo, so okay. You know, yeah, maybe. You, never, you never know. And seeing Oscar Isaac doing that type of fighting, That's, that doesn't look like superhero fighting. That looks like a guy who's on the street. That looks. I mean, and to be fair as well, I mean, again. <clears throat> when this comes out it would have been a couple of weeks off but that falcon winter soldier the latest episode um uh, which you've seen yeah um with IG yep um with uh, Sharon Carter that fight mm. the fight scenes there were brilliant yeah, like, oh, you know yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I, I yeah I, I mean I love that stuff you know i mean yeah. clearly it's one of the reasons why like like the issue 5 is like i still get oh, great my uh, favorite issue. Yeah, yeah you know i i love fight i love fight scenes in films i i yeah. love choreography and i love doing it in in, in comics too yeah. like um um clearly yeah uh, so yeah i love seeing all that so like like i would love a really brawly moon knight where he's fighting guys on the street in one and then he's like you know inside somebody's uh mushroom mind in the next one <laughs> yeah in the floorboard somewhere asking country so like, yeah. like years ago you would say that could never happen yeah we're in a place now with 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 the way yeah. things have been adapted for film and tv yeah anything goes which is pretty exciting you know yeah. um so yeah i'm hoping they lean into it because it would be cool to see um but look at the end of the day like you know it's not going to change for me I, I you know i'm just the guy who who, who worked on it yeah yeah um, oh, but you well, w- I certainly prefer to use it than not use it i guess <laughs> <laughs> well uh, let's hope that you know there are some elements in there i'm sure there will be i mean as i said uh you run with warren ellis um highly memorable it, it's one of those it's uh, you know 
massive Moon Knight cannons uh, out there. Again, we we recommend it to people who have who don't know Moon Knight. Uh, it's a perfect springboard. Uh, it, it's yeah, really good. Um, Declan, thank you so much. Uh, th- this oh, has been yes. really cool. I, I've uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed your your honesty with a lot of stuff. I love the Irish swearing. Um, you know, get it Sorry, in there. I should have asked. No, 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 no. Please do. Like, you know, I think I threw a shit in there, so <laughs> that, that's cool. Um, no, but no. Thank you so, so much. Aaron's bollocks. <laughs> um, no, thanks, man. And uh, congratulations on your 200th episode. That's great. Oh no, thank you so much, Declan. Before we go though, as well, um, I know that you might have some. Can you divulge in any any projects coming up? I, I know that you mentioned before that you have some things bubbling away. Yeah. Um, well. Uh, well, I had, I had a self. I had a. I released a graphic novel last year called Bog Bodies, which is kind of a crime horror uh, story. I think Moon Knight fans would like it because mm-hmm. it's creepy and weird. Uh, not that <laughs> Moon Knight fans are creepy and weird. Hang on. But my run in the book was creepy and weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, I'm doing something for Marvel at the moment that I can't talk about, cool. but is really, really cool. Um, uh, and I have an image image series coming out uh, in May called uh, Time Before Time. It's nice. um I'm doing the covers and co-writing it, and it's uh, describe it as a quantum leap meets the wire. Um, oh, awesome! So it's kind of a, a crime. It's kind of a crime sci-fi story where the future it's set in the future where everything's are really really crap, and uh, people, in order to escape the terrible time, they get smuggled by a crime gang back into the past. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm writing with uh, Rory McConville and the artist is Joe Palmer. If you like, if you like, like Mike Mignola. Yeah. Um, type stuff like he's he's he's, he's an amazing artist. Um, awesome. So yeah, I have that coming out in May. So I've, I've been working on that for the last two years. <laughs> uh, so it's, I'm delighted that it's finally coming out. Oh, awesome. Well, I'll, I'll put um, what I can find, what is available and allowed to be put on in the show notes for for loony listeners there. So um, go check it out as well. It, it's um, it sounds like a it sounds like you're pretty busy. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, kept going. Yeah, because I'm yeah I'm 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 drawing one thing and I'm getting ready to write and draw another one and I'm um, writing that image thing and I'm doing covers for that and I'm doing covers for Marvel and I'm doing oh, yeah. another thing to write and draw coming out after that. Like so, yeah, it's 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 all go. Uh, like look, it's lockdown, so it's not like I'm getting the feck and doing that else. You know? um, <laughs> yeah. But I I, I think I, I wouldn't mind some days off, but yeah, oh, I wouldn't have to. be able to go anywhere anyway. So. Yeah, I just have to, I don't know, just chill out somewhere, just kind of step away from it every now and again. But no, Declan... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what, that's, I, I, do, I, do, I do my best to unplug and, yeah. and plug in, but, I, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm very I'm very glad to be working on so many yeah. genuinely things I, I would love to be doing. Uh, so I, I'm very fortunate. Fantastic. No, well, thank you once again, Declan, and thank you for, for being on our on our show. My pleasure. Cool. Hello, Looney listeners. This is Ray here. Just uh, wanting to say, look, if you like Moon Knight, I urge you to give The Fringe Knight a go. This is a self-published indie release by creator and writer Daniel Doing um, and it's a it's a ripper of a read. Uh, the Fringe Knight is an adventure comic series set in Erie, Pennsylvania and the series stars the title character who protects his city from every threat imaginable. From radioactive wolfmen to mad scientists putting poodles in giant robots, the Fringe Knight is there to protect. Definitely worth checking out, I highly recommend it. Uh, available, uh, just check out the show notes uh, in this episode, but uh, Fringe Night has a Facebook page as well as a Patreon page, and you can also find all the comics on IndiePlanet.com. So check out Fringe Night by Daniel Doing. All right, let's get on to the show. Uh, so, yes, also as well, just finally, loony listeners, uh, Phil, we have a bit of a, a special announcement as well. Yeah, because you had mentioned last year's April swap. So at the end of this month, I believe we have it. Uh, you can find it on uh, the Capes Lunatic Sidekicks. Well, over here, my co-host Lilith is going to be hosting with Noel, right? Yeah, that's uh, it. 
God have cool. And so we're going to swap <laughs> Ray out. He's going to come join me on the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks to discuss a Batman story. Oof. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I figured it out. He's stuck in a glitch. There's a glitch on there. Ray, Ray, Ray can talk his favorite character, Batman. <laughs> oh, I, I, know, know, I been... prefer Owlman. Owlman. Uh, yeah, I've got Ooh. nothing against Batman. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, I'm um, do a podcast night at eight in the morning. That man, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry for all that. Um, but anyway, no big thanks again, everyone. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Here's cool, the 200 cool. more episodes. Here yeah. we go. Hell yeah. 800 more. 800. Love it. Love it. And, um, and oh, fringe night. This. There you go. Yeah, fringe <laughs> night. Go check it out. Issue four has just come out. Loonies, you can contact us through various social platforms. You can drop us a line on email at itkmoonnight at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash itkmoonnight, and a Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash itkmoonnight. We are on Twitter. Our handle is at itkmoonnight, and we're on Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube to search for into the night a moon night podcast we're also on a discord just search for the server into the night with a k please leave an itunes rating or review if you can it helps us reach other loonies out there too also if you have any feedback we also look to improve ourselves and the show finally we're on all good podcast catches apple podcast google play stitcher Spotify, iHeartRadio, also on Podcoin. Please check us out and share episodes with your friends. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.